Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to another, mashallah, uh, Bible historicity stream with my brother's brother Sadat, brother Ijaz, and brother Nazambo himself. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. I'm pretty sure he's going to get his makeup on later, inshallah. All right. So, um, just so you guys understand what's going on, this particular stream is all about going through the books of the New Testament, determining. Um, First of all, going through their historicity through the manuscript evidence for them, and then looking at the uh, what's inside them, the actual um, letters and books themselves, to determine whether or not this seems to fit what's being claimed. Um, one of the main reasons we do this is because many Christians reject a lot of the books of, uh, of the apocryphal books, should I say, of um, the Christianity, due to the fact that there's certain anomalies within them, and they say, "Oh, well, this couldn't have been written then because it say talk about this and." Um, and that wouldn't be the thing. Now, the problem is, you see, we're casting that same standard upon the books they do think are reliable. So the question we're asking is, well, why are you accepting this gospel when it has something that's an anomaly, whereas you throw the other ones out because they also have the same anomaly? So anyway, so Marshall, I went up to the... Uh, my mic's cutting out. Is my mic cutting out? I, it sounds it's fine to me. Okay. So basically, uh, we're on the letters of Titus. This is the uh, one of the three disputed letters, if I'm not wrong, isn't it? We've done Timothy 1, Timothy 2, and now we're on Titus. So Ijaz, as usual, take it away. Yeah. as alaikum to everyone. It's good to be back again for another historicity stream. So there are about six or seven letters disputed about Paul, but generally these three are the most disputed about. Um, Christian scholars still insist that this was not written by Paul, and the letter does contain some unique words more so than the others. I know for one that uh, this letter is the only instance where Paul uses the term for arrogance, I think in chapter 1 verse 7 if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there are also like really odd um, phrases used here which don't always make sense. I just want to quote one of them for you. I think it's verse... I think it's verse four, verse three, actually. It says, in due time, uh, he revealed his word through the proclamation with which I have been entrusted. And the word, the word for his word here does not refer to Jesus, but rather revelation given to Paul directly himself. And so scholars have often wondered, um, you know, in, in this in this verse, it does seem to be the case that Paul is specifying that the Lord uh, brought about a particular promise and that Paul was this promised messenger. So if I start from verse 2 and I go into verse 3, you'll make that connection. It says, in the hope of eternal life that God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, uh, in due time, he revealed his word through the proclamation with which I, Paul, have been entrusted by the command of God, our Savior. So why is this unusual? Has Paul been prophesied to be the one that would be entrusted with God's word? Was Paul prophesied to re receive revelation from God? And the commentaries do attempt to answer this question, but there does not seem to be any case where Paul was spoken of directly himself in the Hebrew Bible. So the question then becomes, how did the earliest Christians understand this particular passage? It seems to be the case that it can only refer to Paul after the death of Paul. Otherwise, they would have had some verses that Paul would have had given them for context to understand this particular verse. Mm -hmm. But then it continues to, uh, by the command of God, our Savior. In this case, scholars have also wondered, is this in reference to Jesus? And the answer is no, because the same formula is typically used, I think, in verse 4 where it says grace and peace from God the Father, so it specifies who is God, and Christ Jesus, our Savior. So you still have that difference. Um, then uh, when you continue, it refers to the island of Crete. So it's in the Mediterranean Sea. It's just south of the Aegean Sea. Uh, so it's to the west of Lebanon, to the south of Greece, and to the north of North Africa, a very big island and well-known. Now, from verse 5 of chapter 1 onwards, Paul speaks about Jews who are from Crete and that these Jews were attempting to bring about um, a false understanding of the message of God. And there's a problem here now because we have no surviving records to inform us of what the beliefs of these people were. So he seems to go against real against Cretan philosophy in some capacity, but he does not seem to explain what their false beliefs were 
And that does seem problematic for me from a historical perspective, because, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you, you, you guys have read the worst book ever written, 1984. Hate that book. I could, if I could burn it, I would. The better book is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, mashallah. But the point is, in uh, 1984, there is that, uh, was it, we are always at war with East Asia, and we're always at war with Eurasia, back and forth, that kind of thing. You never specify what the enemy is actually teaching, and that is, again, the case here with Paul. Um, he lays down as well um, who should be elders in the church. So if most of you have seen the incident with Ravi Zacharias recently, uh, maybe with Hasamo Shimun as well, um, it's been pointed out by Dr. James White, whom I know uh, Darren, inshallah, God willing, should have a conversation with. And I think you guys should jump on over on Alpha and Omega Ministries. I get James White to have a conversation with my boy Darren. I would like to see how that goes. Um, but having said that, does... Um, uh, what does it mean for a person to be an elder in a church? What uh, authority do they have? What are they meant to do? It seems like for the first time, um, Paul is instructing Titus that the entire island, or in this particular region, they need to be appointed elders to each church. So it's not that simply because you were there from very early on that you have authority. Now it seems to be trying to put a structure into place and it's adding some qualifications to be part of the structure. This is one of the reasons the scholars date it later because it seems to be formalizing the church process. Does that make sense, brothers and uh, sisters? I, I hope it should be. Um, yeah, uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but then in chapter two, we do have about, you know, uh, more instructions for men and for women, whether they should drink or not. It has the uh, description that the slaves should obey their masters in verse nine, chapter two, verse nine. Yeah, Hamza does look stressed, doesn't he? He looks worried. Um, in any case, verse nine says, tell slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give satisfaction in every respect they are not to talk back. I find it odd that a slave who you've beaten, you've imprisoned, you've had forced labor, that if they talk back to you, that is really offensive, apparently. Um, and lastly, uh, chapter three, it goes on to, uh, you know, obeying rulers and that sort of thing. But primarily, I want to focus on verse nine. And this is where I, I pick Hamza out specifically. Hamza, in the Gospel of Matthew, is there a genealogy about Jesus? Um, genealogy of Jesus? No. Allegedly about Jesus. Allegedly, yes. In the Gospel of, according to Luke, is there also a genealogy about allegedly Jesus? Yes. So, you know, we, we covered this on a previous stream, but in verse 9 of chapter 3, it says, Do not argue about foolish controversies and genealogies and about the law. Now, let me ask a question to Brother Nazam because he, sorry, Ustad uh, Nazambo, actually, <laughs> calling by his proper title. Brother <laughs> Nazam, um, throughout the New Testament, do they argue about genealogies to prove the case that Jesus is the son of David and therefore will sit on the Davidic throne? Well, I mean, Jesus himself is reported to have argued about genealogies because in Mark chapter 12, Jesus says, um, how can the Messiah be the son of David when David says in the Psalms, um, you know, the Lord said, sit uh, to my Lord, sit at my right mm -hmm. hand. So here it seems like Jesus seems to argue about the genealogy of the Messiah, that he wouldn't necessarily be a son of um, David. And, and, and see, that's the problem now. The genealogies are included in the Gospels. Mm. And the second thing is, do, does Jesus argue about the law with the Pharisees? Yes. Does Paul uh, argue with the Jews about the about the law as well? Um, he he basically to his letter to the Galatians, like he's giving a defense of his position with regards to, you know, not that salvation doesn't come through by keeping the law. Mm -hmm. So when we put all this together, I would say most of the New Testament falls under one of those two topics, and yet we have an inspired word of God allegedly saying, ignore that, don't partake in that. If mm. we were to obey this particular verse, we would have to rid ourselves potentially of 75% of the New Testament almost.
Mm-hmm. And that for me troubles me because Allah in the Quran, and you know, I'm not bringing the Quran into the stream, but Allah says, if my revelation was not from me, you would find therein many contradictions. Similarly, mm-hmm. in the law of logic, the second law of uh, logic, the law of non contradiction, you can't have A, B, A, and not A at the same time. So, in this case, is God telling us to examine genealogies? Is he examine us to go into arguments about the justification by works? Should we be following the law, the mitzvot of the Hebrew Bible? All of these things. This verse seems to go against all of that. And that is what I want the Christians to speak about. Uh, it does. Wrap up. Yep. But, uh, well, the, well, there is what well, there is. You're talking about the genealogies verse there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chapter three. Yes. Yeah. Uh, verse nine. Verse nine. Mm hmm. Right, and we saw that we saw that earlier on too in First Timothy to uh, Paul or the the Pauline writer saying to uh, to to not heed to, to uh, endless fables and, and genealogies. So the other angle on this, um, but I'm really interested in knowing what you think, though, Ajaz, whether this could be correct or or is this uh, uh, incorrect? Is that some have written that this could be like an indirect refutation by Paul or the Pauline writer of James? and uh, the original disciples of uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. Because uh, whereas those disciples could claim some kind of direct isnad uh, to, or chain back to uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, being direct eyewitness disciples of Jesus, uh, Paul couldn't claim that. Um, and in the case of James, there's a family connection. So there's that mm-hmm. kind of genealogy. There's the family link with Jesus, which Paul also would not have. So is that something you've ever come across or what what do you think? So I've heard this before and what they point out is specifically when it speaks about arguments about the law, that is what the Jerusalem councils were about, uh, about practicing the law. So I've seen some commentators indicate towards that, but the, the argument I've also generally seen is that if this is Pauline in nature, then it clearly shows a split or a post, uh, uh, the fall of Jerusalem, uh, composition because now it's trying to reconcile and put aside most of the things which Paul conversed about in his own letters. So it would seem to be like a post hoc a post hoc or after the fact uh, harmonization of the message to calm down the disputes between the people in the church. That would be my perspective from what I've seen. Uh, Nazam maybe do you have anything to add? Yeah that, that's an interesting perspective uh, with regards to that verse I um, mean chapter three verse nine about not to argue about genealogies. Another way of looking at it is could be that the person is offering a defense for the Paul's apostolship in that, uh, you know, Paul didn't necessarily had a direct um, isnad or a link to to the the Jesus of history, um, but he claimed to have received his gospel not from any man or from any human source, but was taught to him by, by but by God through a revelation through Jesus Christ. But um, also what I found interesting was um, that um, in, in this letter, like in, in Titus, um, you, uh, just to go back to that point about like the, the disciples of Jesus um, and whether the letter of James is maybe possibly a response or a reaction to what some of what Paul has said or written, um, so in the same chapter, in chapter 3, verse 9, you have our uh, justification by grace. But um, James mm-hmm. in chapter 2, verse, I think it's 25 uh, or 26, um, James is saying that a person is justified um, not, not by faith alone, but by, by your works. Whereas um, Titus, um, chapter 3 in general, speaks about a person isn't saved by doing good works or general good deeds, uh, but it's by just you're justified by by grace by what Jesus has done. Um, so it, it does seem like that whether the author or the letter of James um, may had Titus in mind and may be responding to Titus. Um, another thing about the authorship of Titus is that I noticed that. Paul in chapter 1 verse 1 uh, begins by introducing himself to Titus whereas um, Titus was actually a close friend of Paul like he was a traveling companion of Paul that Paul makes mention elsewhere like in Galatians and also in 2nd Corinthians and so because Titus 
traveled in, uh, along with Paul in some of his uh, missions, um, it, it seems unlikely that if this is a personal letter or private correspondence of Paul to Titus, it seems unlikely that uh, Paul would have to introduce himself or reintroduce himself to Titus, since mm -hmm. Titus would have already known who Paul was. And um, also here in verse 1, Paul introduces himself as a slave of God and he never uses that expression anywhere else in any of the in the rest of the New Testament it's only found here in Titus um, and he also calls himself an apostle of Jesus Christ um, so and he, he says um, and a recognition of religious truth so these types of expressions of phraseology are, are not commonly found or not found at all um, in any of his other epistles. So um, it does seem like on the side that it seems unlikely that Paul wrote Titus, but Titus um, was written by some anonymous follower um, pretending to be Paul. What I've seen noticed by some scholars is that First Timothy chapter 2 and uh, I think Titus chapter 1 seem to be... Um, is it chapter... One, uh, no, I think it's chapter two, Titus chapter two. No, I mean, actually incorrect. So Titus chapter one, verses five to nine, and then First Timothy chapter two. And what I saw so in one commentary, it seems to be the exact copy of the other, but just a few yeah. words slightly changed. And so the question then becomes, is the author copying simply from another fake letter by Paul and just carrying on that tradition? It doesn't seem to introduce much in the way of anything else new. I just have two points to make. Sorry, one final point, um, which is that uh, when it comes to manuscript testimony, this uh, particular book does have a fairly earlier manuscript than the rest of the Pauline letters. Um, in the form of P32, which is a 3rd century to 4th century um, manuscript. I think it takes a bit of verse 7 onwards. And I think that's the earliest manuscript in regards to this letter. Well, you know, Mar the Marcionite canon doesn't actually have Titus. Mm -hmm. And is the Marcionite canon, is that like the earliest canon? or yeah, Marcion was the first, I believe. Okay, so, so, so Mar Marcion... Um, in his canon, he has like 10 letters of Paul, and Luke. but it lacks 1st and 2nd Timothy as well as Titus. I believe uh, so. Which is curious, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Um, my, my final point that I can, or uh, just two more points. Um, in chapter 1, verse 12, Paul speaks about Cretans, and he mm -hmm. says that a Cretan has said that all Cretans are liars. Um, mm -hmm. So logically, um, this statement doesn't seem to make sense because... If a Cretan says that all Cretans are liars, and if this statement is true that all Cretans are liars, then it means that um, that, that the the Cretan who said this is speaking a lie. No, I'm so, so, so saying Cretan. It's Cretan. Cretans. Thank okay. you, Cretans. <laughs> I was, I let it go. Let it go. We just kept saying. It. We just kept saying it. Oh, go on. But if, if they are liars, then they are Cretans as well, right? Oh yeah, the Cretan Cretans. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> So, right. so, so basically, um, if the statement is true, then all, all Cretans are, are not lies because they're you. So I'm Christian. All Christians are not lies because there you have a Christian speaking the truth. And if the statement, um, or it means that this statement itself is false, um, like mm -hmm. it, it can't it can't be true in the absolute sense in both ways. Um, so, and the, the second point is also, um, Titus also speaks about obedience to uh, those that, who are in authority in government, which is a good teaching. I, I don't disagree with his teaching. But how, however, in the book of Revelations, um, it speaks about like all that are in charge and all the powers of the world are, are evil and are corrupt and shouldn't be obeyed and followed. I'm basically paraphrasing. Um, so again, this seems to be um, an inconsistency, although it's a good teaching. You know, uh, 
Nazim, the first time you shared that with me, <clears throat> I didn't get it because I was just too caught up on that word Cretan, thinking, okay, what is oh, Cretan? Okay. Somebody forgot. So, I, j just to say, so I mean, just just to make it clear to everybody, then that would be like me saying that, uh, like a Jew once said, that all Jews are liars. A Jew once said that all Jews are liars. Okay, so now is that statement true? <laughs> because if, if Jews are always liars, then then this Jew must be lying, which means Jews are not always liars. It's a paradox, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and I think that's a great point to uh, to uh, to share with people. And what it shows is that Paul Paul would have been without divine guidance at this point when he was writing this, because he was not able to decipher or understand the subtlety of that paradox. I don't know if he understood what he was quoting, but God allowed him to quote something that is a paradox and, and doesn't really make sense. Right. There is also the issue with uh, verse twelve of chapter one. It was one of them, their very own prophet, who said, Cretans are always liars, vicious, brutes, lazy gluttons. Some people have wondered when it uses the term prophet here, is he acknowledging that there can legitimately be prophets outside of the fold of belief? And secondly, th this statement has been att attributed to a quite, actually quite a few people from what I've seen. It's a similar statement, not the exact same. But again, if this was by a non-Christian, then again, technically it recognizes an unbelieving prophet. If he did mean that this person was a false prophet, uh, but his statement still came true, then according to Deuteronomy, I think he legitimizes that this is a prophet. So it, it's a bit of a weird statement to make altogether. Um, um, it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. Right, we're nearly ready for the guests. Right, just just, um, just address, where, where, can we just address this comment section? Huh? Where are your glasses? No. No, where are your glasses? I only wear glasses when I'm trying to read a small screen, but I've got a big screen now and I can read it nicely. They're wearing reading glasses, but you know what? It's really small. Uh -huh. All right. People are saying, oh, Hamza's this, Hamza. Listen, relax, guys. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. First thing is, I don't do stress. Right. I don't do stress. My beard does the stress. I don't do stress. Right. <laughs> um, it's new lighting. It's a new setup. Mashallah. The camera's got a new flex. It's a new computer. So everything's like, I've never looked so clear. Do you get me? <laughs> so uh, that's why. Second thing, these guys, Mashallah, are smashing it. Uh, there's nothing for me to talk about Titus. I've got two things just to say, nothing major. Just, for example, anyone who talks about the way uh, Islam and women and this and that. Well, look, according to Titus, you, women, you should be subject to your husbands. That's the first thing. And second thing, slaves, listen to your masters. These are the two things I took from it. So um, these are the teachings of Christianity. Slave, obey your master. Woman, obey your husband. So I, I think it's kind of ironic when Christians try to come on saying, oh, Islam is oppressive to women. And, wait a minute, wait a minute. Re read your own book, mate. And that's it. So anyway, yeah. So please, everyone at home, relax. I'm smashing it. Don't worry. I'm I'm cool. I'm so happy with my new setup. I'm so happy that United smashed City like I said they would. So don't worry about me. Yeah, like I said, I don't distress. But thank you, thank you for caring. Alhamdulillah. All right. Now the second, third thing. Uh, I'm not happy with the likes. The likes is pathetic. <laughs> the likes is pathetic. Really is. We got 700 people watching. Yeah. And subhanAllah, I'm going to do a refresh. So please, guys, you know the score. Just go quickly like it before I look. Because the show doesn't move until the likes uh, correspond with the views. Let's have a look. Oh, you're lucky there's an advert coming on my phones for this first. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, 478 likes. That's pathetic. It really, really is. Oh, it's not a big deal, is it? Just click the thumb. Right, do it again. Maybe there's something wrong with my phone. Maybe it was, I don't know, lagging or something. Exactly. It does. Isn't he? Um, one question about chapter two, please. 541, uh, get in there. Keep going. Yeah, go on. In no, in chapter two, uh, verse 13, did you discuss the, the, the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ bit? No, I didn't go into Okay, that. I'm in and out, so I, I apologize. But a what I have a note here in my Bible, uh, which says that uh, the New American Bible, mm -hmm. which is the official Catholic translation, reads of our God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So, is there something about the wording here, possibly, or maybe in the original manuscripts that indicates that you know these are two separate beings? There's there's God, and then there's the Savior Jesus Christ. This has been th these phrases have been used previously, 
So in the Greek, it says, uh, Theos doxes to megalon theokai soteros. Uh, yeah, so yeah, basically uh, our great God and savior. Uh, so basically they've, they've always argued that whenever a conjunction is used and it mentions one subject previous to, to, to the conjunction, it's actually speaking about both as being one. Um, so then that God will be both the God and savior in this case. But I don't find that to be the case. This is just an argument that uh, it's an argument based on semantics, not necessarily what the author originally intended. Because if you go back to verse one, sorry, chapter one, hmm. and you go to verse um, uh, verse three, it mentions by the command of God, our savior. So in this case, is that referring to Jesus as the savior? No. So he's, he uses it in two different forms. So the grammarians have noted that uh, one specifically refers to God the Father, and in the form used in chapter two, it's specifically about Jesus himself, the construction of it. Um, so after all the things you guys have all said, then what are you expecting the Christians to come on to respond to? What is, what is the main point do you think that they should be addressing in everything we've said? Because it said a lot of stuff. So what would you condense it down to? And what would you expect, for example, Frank to come on? Uh, and what, what should he be coming to challenge, respond to? Okay, if it's based 599 on... 599 likes. Come on, keep going, guys. Go on, say again. Yeah, if, if, if it is that Christians do come on, I want them to demonstrate with evidence, with reason, with logic, why this letter is from Paul. Does God endorse it? That would be my first thing. Uh, second question would be, how do you know that this is, I, I copyrighted this actually, how do you know that this letter is reliable and mm -hmm. what is reliable in it? And thirdly, how do they explain the, uh, the the setup that Paul is now calling for in terms of a presbyter or an elder in the church? Why is he now trying to build up this type of organization now? What is the purpose behind it? So those would be the three things. Uh, uh, if I had to add anything, it's the two points that you brought up as well. Are wives meant to totally obey their husbands? If not, why not? And are slaves meant to obey their masters? If not, why not? And did Paul ever speak about manumitting slaves altogether? Yeah, okay. We're up to 612 likes, 714 views. Could be 100 trolls hanging around. Let's roll. All right. Can, we, can we be strict with the guests today? They should speak on topics solely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Here's Frank. Frank looks rough today. Frank, were you in a fight, a pillow fight before this or something? Oh. No. <laughs> okay. So welcome, Frank. Oh. Okay. We, missed, How you we, missed, doing? we missed you on Friday. Friday. Hams is done. Oh, so, yeah, my Sunday morning. Um, no, as it happened, I had to drive up to a, my son's living up north, had to get and see him. So, yeah, I, oh. I, was, I was on the road early in the morning. We pray and hope that he's well. Was your trip safe, Frank? It, it, it was fine, yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yeah, he, he, he's just moved up there. Um, yeah, actually, one of the things I wanted to pick up on was something you said about, uh, now, what's the pronunciation? It's pseudepigraphy. Pseudepigraphy. Um, right, right here in someone's, someone else's name. Uh -huh. And you're saying it's a Greek thing. And by the way, just tell me if there's background noise because... Um, I'm sitting in a different room and there's someone using a saw out in the back street. So if you can hear it, tell me. We don't, Normally. we don't actually. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so. Oh, by the way, Frank, we both know that's like your neighbor cutting up bodies or something. You don't have to admit <laughs> it, but it's fine. No, uh, it's, it, it's in the back street. It's a few doors down. I don't know who's doing it. But um, yeah, so you say it's a Greek thing to write in someone else's name. And the thing is, that was true in the time of like Pythagoras and Plato, like 500 BC. But that changed over time. So by about 300 BC, like you had the, the, um, the Library of Alexandria, the guy who was in charge of that, I've got his name, and then Kali Makrasis. So they started to index books and, and try to establish who was the original author or if there was an original author and so on. And, and that became more of a thing in Greek writing. And, and this is... Well, in the second century AD, there's a guy, Diogenes, Diogenes no, Laertes, yeah. who, yeah, he was trying, he wrote a book called, um, it was the opinions of, lives and opinions of eminent philosophers. And he, he's writing on, you know, which, the cynic which, philosopher which, himself, which yeah. things are you know, genuine by the guy, which things were, you know, someone else writing his name or this thing. And Eusebius very much followed his pattern in, like, he took a lot of his patterns. So, the uh, Greeks, they'd certainly got the idea that 
well, everything was anonymous by, by the, you know, by the first century, they, they were well onto that, identifying who wrote stuff. And the thing with this being Paul, um, the, the thing is like, as I said before, first and second Timothy and Titus, they, they, go, they go together, they stand and fall together. So there's a lot of stuff in there where Paul, it's Paul talking about personal details. And so if it's, if it's a forgery, it's an elaborate forgery. Like someone's trying really hard to look like Paul and particularly this. Oh, that's the whole point of a forgery, Frank. But the thing is you only do, you only take that effort. Like people forge things either to like to make money or, you know, to deceive people in a big way. They're trying to win someone over in an argument. And th like this book's got so little that's doctrine really in it. All it's doing is it's really talking about how to run the church. And what you're saying about the establishing elders, well, that, that's just um, normal for an organisation. You've got people in charge, like so, it uses the words overseers or, or elders. Just, it's, it's just the people in charge. And he's saying the people in charge should be reputable people. You don't want drunks. You don't want you know, people that are violent or the rest of it. The, these are the sort of, sort of things you want to look for in, in the list. So in a way, I said it's being a pretty innocuous book, really. It's, it's not worth forging. So on, on this point, Frank, let me say thank you, first of all, for your points. On the first point, you mentioned that the Greeks, you know, by the second, third century, they were not interested in people that uh, claimed to have forged documents. Paul himself, in the other letters, mentions, as Hamza has mentioned previously, that there were people writing fraudulently in his name, and you should look out for it. So clearly there was some kind of motivation already. Secondly, you, you know, I understand the claim that you believe that there's a lot of personal information in these letters, but generally 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy and Titus, the pastoral letters, they contain quite genuinely very little personal information. I mean, a lot of this information you cannot cross reference with the other Pauline letters and extract from them. Uh, you know, certain lines of evidence to corroborate the claims made. So, you know, if I were to ask you, for example, who is the Titus being referred to here? What does early Christian history authentically say about him? What do the Cretan bishop, Cretan, my goodness, Nizam has got me got it saying Cretan now, mm -hmm. right? What has the Cretan elders written about Titus? If he's the one that appointed the elders in the churches, typically what we would find via apostolic succession for the elders in the church, uh, from one elder to the other approved by you know the, the the community of the wider Christian world, then you should expect to see them providing some metadata or contextual information here. How can you validate and verify that any of this quote unquote personal information is you know authentic to begin with? And you also raise the possibility of well, why would anyone go through the trouble? It's not going through trouble to say do good. Anyone can do that. For me, the genuine motivation here is to exhort people to a certain standard in the church so they, they perhaps did have good motivations. But by having these good motivations, they went about it in a wrong way by, you know, pretending to be Paul. And that's why we argued 1 Timothy chapter 2 and um, Titus chapter 1, there's that overlap in the terms used. Uh, almost line for line, letter by letter, word by word. So it seems like they are building off of something that they already sent to someone previously. Had that First Timothy chapter 2 letter been circulated, then it is possible that uh, they would have used the exact same words. But because they changed it just slightly enough in some of the cases, it raises the question of if, you know, if Paul says do good, why would he write the same thing in a slightly different way to another close and personal friend? It, it does not make sense. Well, I think that's arguable whether, whether it makes sense. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes write something to somebody and then I think, oh, I should send that to somebody else and I'll, but I'll personalize it a bit for the other person. I, you know, I'll change it. Yeah, but there's no purpose in slightly changing this or personalizing it when you're sending the exact same message. There is only so many words you can use to say do good. And literally, there's like a series of five or six verses that are line for line structured and articulated in almost the exact same way. Um, so that for me presents a problem. The second problem is, and you know, you, you brought this up yourself, why would anyone go through the trouble? 
clearly it seems that there's a controversy with the Jews on the island who are following some form of Christian philosophy, some form of it. Now, this letter provides you with very little on the false doctrines that those individuals had. The only thing he mentions in chapter one is that you need to have sound doctrine, but he does not explicate what that means. What is the sound doctrine in opposition to these people that you're meant to have? He even says at one point, um, if I may read verses nine to 10, he, meaning the presbyter, must have a firm grasp of the word that is trustworthy in accordance with the teaching, so it's a specific teaching, so that he may be able both to preach with sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict it. What is the sound doctrine that the Christian Jews opposed according to these passages? Do we know? Well, I think when he's talking about the sound doctrine, he's just he's talking about the gospel message which he's been preaching. That's what the what the apostles taught. I, I don't think there was a Christian philosophy that he's talking about. Like, I, I think the thing about the, the Christians being lazy brutes, I, I think that's actually a joke that he's making that, um, huh? about the people. But uh, he's having a joke with Titus. But the, the philosophies that he's talking about is Jewish stuff. Like that they, Frank. they like to go on about um, genealogy, Frank. fine points. Isn't, to isn't so on. a joke? Like if I, oh, I'm probably going to get cancelled. Should I say this? I'm going to say it. Let's hope I don't get cancelled, right? How would you like it, Frank, if I said Mexicans are brutish and lazy people, right? Instantly, he's just cancelled. He's, you know, fired. He's, you know, whatever the case may be. Even if it's said as a joke, this is scripture, and we take scripture seriously. We derive lessons from it. Nothing here reads to me as if it were scripture. I just want to read verse 10 and 11 for you so you can understand my perspective. It says, there are also many rebellious people does not identify who they are. Idle talkers. This may be woman because in chapter two, he speaks about the women who are gossiping. And deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, the Jews. They must be silenced. He does not say in what way, since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for sordid gain what it is not right to teach. Yet he does not specify what the right and truthful teachings are. Frank, let me ask you a question, and maybe one of the other brothers can jump in after this, uh, as I want all of them to engage you, inshallah. Frank, if I'm telling you, do not follow the people with false beliefs, right? And I'm specifying the deceivers on your island, in your state, in your county, and they have false beliefs, and I don't specify what those false beliefs are, how can I expect you to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong in regards to what they see? So I think what his emphasis here, the things he talks about is right living. Like he's telling people how to live in a right way. And the thing he's arguing against is these controversies. And the thing is, like in the first few centuries, the Jews did write a lot of stuff, which was, you know, it's not, not Old Testament stuff. They, there's a lot of stuff to do with, um, I'm just trying to think of a name for it, like numerology, like getting getting verses and you work out the, um, the the numerical value of it and you compare, there's a whole lot of stuff and it led to the Kabbalah and all the rest of it. So there's all this kind of... Yeah, but he um, doesn't mention that kind of stuff here, Frank. But, right but before this, yeah, right before this, he speaks about the elders in the church. So these people are not elders in the church as yet from what we can understand. So where does it fit in what the Cretan, and by the way, you can use the word Cretan as I've just remembered, so Nazam was right, by the way, Nazambo was right. Um, in this case, what is the specific false belief that these people had? Because as far as I remember, can you read for me verse 7 very quickly, Frank? Of which chapter? Uh, of chapter 1, same chapter. Oh. And, and in the meantime, just to add to the confusion, if there are any Christians watching this on the island of Crete in Greece, Please come on and tell us what you think this passage means. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, chapter one seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah since, um, oops, just lost it. Since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Okay. Pause. What does he mean by "they must be blameless"? Well, not that they can be charged with some some uh, sin, some outward sin. 
but it says blameless. What does blameless mean? <laughs> not, yeah, not being, not being obviously yes, sin sinful in some major way. But it doesn't say not be sinful in some major way. It says must be blameless. It usually, the, as, as far as I know, the word usually means you can't be charged with something, some obvious sin. I don't see that in the uh, in the in, in the text, uh, Frank. I need your help. What do you, here. Think, what do you think it means? It's not for me to answer. Uh, you know, Paul in Romans, I think, says that all have fallen short of the glory of God, and he does also teach that you know if you break one law, it's as if you've broken the entire law. So for me, blameless has to mean blameless. I don't try to allegorize it or or limit its complete impact here. It is calling you to spiritual and material perfection in my mind. Um, yeah, simple. Well, the, the other things that are listed there, they're fairly obvious sins that you, you don't want in a person. So I think he's just hes just saying that that's kind of a, you know, the summary and these are the specifics of, of being blameless, not, not doing any of these things. I, I, I don't think there's anything... Like, Frank, like reading this letter, him. Frank, reading this letter, what would you think of Jewish people? Oh, God. <laughs> um, well, which Jewish people? The one Paul, the letters, the author of the letters referring to. What, 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 I mean, what, what would you come away? If you were the, the people who he's writing to, what would be, what would be left in, what taste would you be left for people uh, of, who are Jewish? Because you asked the question earlier, why would someone fake a letter? Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what do you mean by Jewish? Because there would have been... Those uh, those ones that are circumcised, there's no differentiation. It's not yeah, like no. as if... Uh, there, would have been, there would have been Jews in the church. So there would no. have been people... When, when it's speaking about those who are circumcised, who is that? The, yeah, the Jews. Right. And the way the author of this letter speaks about them, how, how would you be left thinking? As if they're teaching something different. Well, there are those who are teaching that you must be must be circumcised to be a Christian, to be saved. And, and that's the thing he argues against always. That the, He's saying the Gentiles don't need to be circumcised in order to become a Christian. So what, what, is, that, is that what the Jews were teaching? Oh, some of them were. I think we've had this conversation before. And where did you get that, that from? Well, I mean, it's in Galatians. There's, there's a number of his letters where he's talking about the circumcision group. So there were Jews who came to... To teach about and and t like um like in Acts um, when he was in Antioch there was a party came down from um, from Judea and and were t teaching the people you have to be circumcised now if you become a if you're a yeah Christian. yeah we've done we've done we've done this we've done uh, yeah. we've spoken and about he argues against that but but it's, it's in a very derogatory way about Jews uh, that well, that's why when I, I read the letter and for me is. He's derogatory about the circumcision party. No, no, that was a that was just a. Uh, he actually mo he, the way he talks about the circumcision is is actually called calling them the circumcised ones. It's like a kind of mocking. So you, you refer to in Titus? Yeah, yeah. It's like an insult. Well. He is opposed to the circumcision party, that's for sure. Can I read for you something, Frank? Sure. <laughs> so in the same chapter 1, verse 14, not paying attention to Jewish myths or to commandments of those who reject the truth. Now, this is specifically in regards to the Jews themselves because they do have commandments in the Talmud as well. It seems to be the case that he is opposing the beliefs that the Jews had specifically, and he's calling them out as not being part of the truth. But I want to read for you, just juxtapose this with what is said in Matthew chapter 23. Um, so from verse 1 it reads, I'm going to go until verse 3, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach. So you are meant to do what uh, what they say to you, 
but don't be like them and be hypocrites. So on one part, I have Paul saying, reject the, allegedly Paul, reject those Jewish myths. And on the other hand, I have Jesus being, you know, saying, accept them and do them and obey them. I, I just had an internet drop out. Did you? No, you're fine. We can hear you and we can see you fine. Yeah, but I, I lost you for a minute then, or oh, 30 seconds. Okay, so the, 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 the basic point is in Titus chapter 1, verse 14, the author behind this epistle seems to dismiss many Jewish beliefs as myths and not being from the truth. Whereas in the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 3, Jesus em emphasizes that believers should obey what the... Uh, with the traditions of the Pharisees themselves. So one is saying, believe them, the other is saying, don't believe them. Like, like we accept the Old Testament, but the Jewish belief continued to evolve, uh, to evolve like after the time of Christ. Not the and, Old Testament, Frank, because in Matthew chapter 23, it says, do what they command. So what they speak, not what has been written in the book. He differentiates between the two. So in this case, he's not speaking about the Hebrew Bible, but about the uh, uh, the sayings and teachings of the uh, Pharisees themselves. No, so I, it's I it's it's not just it's not just saying go back to the people of the book. It's saying go back to the people of the book and follow everything they tell you to do. Can I just read from Titus one as well? You know, because this part about the circumcision group, because it it covers two things. One, it it covers that thing you said is a joke by Paul. Yeah, I, I, I'm Frank, I don't know where you get your uh, comprehension from. I'm going to be honest with you. So Titus 1.10, for there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the circumcision group. They must be silenced because they are disrupting all households by teaching things they ought not to teach. And for that, for the sake of dishonest gain. One of Crete's own prophets has said it. Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy gluttons. This saying is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply so that they will be sound in the faith and will pay no attention to the Jewish myths or to the merely human commands to those who reject the truth. There's no joke here, mate. I don't know where you get this idea that it's, it's, this is in a jokey manner. And, um, and it is referring to the Jews as if they're deceiving people. This idea that Jews are deceiving people with this, uh, whatever it is, for gain. What's that about? Well, I think he's talking about the, the Cretans here, but like, there, there are people who attach themselves to the church. No, no, the circumcision group we're talking about here. Who are the circumcision group? The circumcision group would be would be Jews. Right. So, for there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deception, especially those of the cir circumcision group. They must be silenced because they are disrupting whole households by teaching things they ought not to teach, and that for the sake of dishonest gain. I don't. I don't understand. Why would the author of his letter be warning people from the Jews? What What, what were they doing? Well, for gain. There were, there were people coming in, and they are looking for support from the church. And like first people come in, they've got these esoteric doctrines, and we'll show you this. All this, yeah. You know, they interpret stuff from the Old Testament and so on. And yeah. Where you getting that from? Where you get Where you get your information from, though? Well, I'm, I'm saying that's the experience of churches throughout the ages. And that's still happening. No, no, where now. did you get that? You said exegesis of this verse from. I'm trying to understand. I'm learning here, Frank. But there, are, there are rebellious people. There are people who. Um, like you, you mentioned Rabbi Zacharias before, uh, Jazz. Um, I, I can't see but that he was someone who. Yeah, you know, he was acting for gain. Well, I, I can't, I don't think it's, you know, allowed for me to say what he gained, but I can tell you, guarantee you, he lost a lot. Okay. Uh, you, oh, do you all wanna... right, Frank, I think, um, I, think, I think your time is done. Thank you for coming, putting your okay. point across. Next we'll time, come, again, next time the way to do this, Frank, is to come with the actual point that you want to refute. Well, I, 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 really I think he tried. Refute. I think he, he started, started off. I think he started what was your refuting? He was no, refuting. I raised the thing with the jazz about the Greeks and whether they talk about pseudo writers and so on i think we sort of discussed that right. sort of discussed that. Point, i don't see why anyone would bother forging this this letter it, there's just so uh, unless they didn't like jews 
they didn't like the circumcision party. <laughs> they didn't like Jews. The author's letter didn't like Jews. Said they're they're they're, they're rebellious. That they're, they're, they're teaching not horrible Peace things. Givers, idle talkers. Yeah, it was. It was it, the, whoever wrote this letter didn't like Jews and didn't want people to think good of Jewish people. Can, can oh, I just? Can I there's just some motive for someone forging the letter. Can I just quote, quote something? I actually think that Joseph Goebbels actually um it references this letter in one of his. Uh, Nazi party talks because in one of his lectures he says one day we will silence those dirty lying Jews and in this case it says verse 11 they must be silenced since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for sordid gain yeah. and he refers to them as deceivers idle talkers and rebellious people one of the ideas that the Nazi party had was that the Jews were rebelling against the nationhood of the uh, Third Reich a different conversation for a different day, but it just occurred to me that verse 11 is very, um, very similar to what Joseph Goebbels himself yeah. said. And, and also this particular letter could have been used to justify some of the church fathers as you burn all the synagogues down. That, that, that could be another, this, there was this anti-Semitism in the, in the church fathers history. Maybe if you, that was fueled by this as well. So I, I think you can find motive. I think you can find motive. And just a last question for you, Frank, before you go. Do you believe your uh, the wife should be subject to the husband? Yeah. Good man. Take care, dude. <laughs> uh, I've, got, I've got one question. When someone like you becomes a uh, Muslim, yeah. do you have to get circumcised? Do I have to be? I don't believe I have to be. Uh, it's not a compulsory. I, I am circumcised. I did get it done. Um, but it's not something that a revert has to do. Frank, before you go, could I ask you a question? One more question, one more question, yep. Last question. Uh, what do you call a bad circumcision? <laughs> Painful. A rip-off. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> <Back from. laughs> I crack my own self up sometimes. Honestly. All right. So that's Frank, you know, you know, Hamza, you look so, like, handsome with the lights on you for a change. I say, I'm in spotlight today, mate. The lights are closest. Usually the lights are far away, but today they're like there. I could touch the lights. Usually I could the lights actually are... see the individual hairs on your beard. It count all the white ones, mate. That's all the stress or wisdom. I'm not worked it out yet. I don't know if this guy was trolling the other day. Let's just see. PA, you're muted. I remember this guy. He came in with a P in his... Uh... He kept uh, changing image. it about three times. You know what? I can't. Be, I can't even bother. He, he did. He did this in the other stream. He kept coming, not coming on, not speaking. So, see you, mate. Oh, here we go. Well, talk talking of, no. talking about uh, Hitler. Cut. John <laughs> Craig. Oh my God. John Craigan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let, let let me just briefly summarize what's going on in Titus chapter one because Frank wasn't doing too well. I felt kind of I felt kind of bad for him actually, but. Uh, what's going on in Titus chapter one is Paul is actually re rebuking the Jews for being racist towards the Christians. What's going on is that he's saying, and I'll, I'll just read the full context. He's saying, I'll read it from the King James too. He says, for there are many, uh, many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of, the, of circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, which means they want money. Uh, it says in verse 12, for one of themselves, even a prophet of their own. So it's actually a Jewish prophet who is saying uh, the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Then he goes on and says, you know, uh, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. So Paul is rebuking the Jews for basically being essentially John, John, racist. Why, why, why did you say he's a Jewish prophet? Uh, because he's saying it's saying a prophet of one of their own. So it's saying one of Crete's own prophets. Yeah, but, but in the context, he's talking about the Jews. What? No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 some commentaries did mention it could be a Jewish prophet. Well, yeah, I, 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 I'm, at the, I'm at the view as a Jewish prophet who's saying that. Who's Say it saying again. That? I'm at the view as a Jewish prophet who's saying this about the Cretans. One of Crete's own prophets. Which 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 Jewish prophet was sent to the Cretans? It is one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, and saying this about the Cretans. It's talking about a Jewish prophet is saying it about the Cretans. They, they say that there is a Jew called Alexandria or Alexander or something along those lines. Um, some commentaries mentioned that they were misled by that particular Jew. And that's the one that's being quoted here. As to its authenticity, I do not know. 
either way, Paul, he's he's basically just rebuking the Jews for essentially being racist racist towards Gentiles, basically. Where do you see the racism against Gentiles? Because he's because it's the Jewish prophet saying the Christians are are liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, and he says rebuke them sharply. But Frank, he, he he's of their own. He's Christian. Well, again, in context, he's saying that there's a he's saying a prophet one of their own for referring to a Jew. Well, hold up, hold up. I just realized that you you're arguing against racism. H has things changed, John? Okay, okay, okay. Again, the definition of racism is the belief in supremacy, not separatism. So it's a big difference there. I, I can say I can send you the dictionary definition of what it means. Are you still on that separatism flex? Uh, you know, I've kind of toned down on it. Uh, I don't really believe, and I don't think it's that big of a deal anymore. The whole separatism thing. I don't. Have you done that test to find out what your heritage is? Uh, I have. I have actually just recently got a new job, so I haven't had time to. You should get that test done. Yeah. Ba basically, but the point is, is that is that again, I'm not a separatist. I'm, I'm not. I don't believe. I mean, sorry, I'm not a supremacist. Went say I don't believe in supremacy, but. Um, I like I like how you thought that there was a big difference between separatism and supremacy there, um, but j just to be clear, John, would you support the 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 the, the statement of the Christian prophet that his own people are lazy? Like, would you advocate for this level of racism? Uh, no, because Paul is it's not the Christians saying that; it's the Jews saying it about the Christians. No, but Paul agrees. He says one of their very own, meaning one of the very people from Crete, and he says yeah. this saying is true. Oh really? Let me see the verse. Yeah, the author of the letter oh, says this, this saying is true. No, he's saying he's saying this. He's saying this witness is true, as in the witness against the Jews. The testimony is it's the object is referring to the previous thing said. Uh, it's a it's a form in the quotation. Basically, saying what he said is true. Well, yeah, that therefore, true. admonish admonish them sharply. Yeah. So, yeah. So he's, he's actually telling you this is true. So this is how you deal with them. Wait, no, he's, he's saying this is true as in this is what they believe. No, he's not saying that. No. But then he's what, saying why? that statement is true. And okay, therefore, you should counsel them or yeah, well, he, in, in admonish the, them. In the King James, he says, rebuke them sharply, referring to the Jews. What? In, in, <laughs> in, in, in basically, okay, what's going on is that the Jews are basically saying these things to the Christians. So Paul is, because the context of the whole passage is about the qualifications for a bishop and an elder. So Paul, he is using this as an example of, you know, uh, how an elder is supposed to behave, like rebuking false prophets and that kind of stuff. Um, I want you to do me a favor, John. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Can you read for me uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 7? Yeah, sure. Titus 2, 7. Uh, in all things, showing that self pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorrupt gravity, sincerity. So he's saying to be productive, right? Yeah, essentially. Right. And I'll go back to chapter 1, verse 12. Right? Yeah. It says that the Cretans are lazy gluttons. Uh, yeah, well, the King James says they're, they're liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, which essentially is the same thing. Right. So Paul is affirming that they're lazy, therefore push them to be productive. No, in context, he's saying that this is what the Jews are saying about the Christians. John, one more time, right? Your arguments can't, your understanding of verse 13 of chapter 1 can't work because if Paul is disagreeing that they are not lazy, Paul, all right, one more time. If Paul is saying by chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, that these people are not lazy, that, that argument does not work because in chapter 2, he reinforces the idea that they should become productive, meaning that they're not productive as it is, meaning that they are lazy. So he's yeah, that, affirming that, that, the that idea been, that they're that, lazy. That may have been the case. Yeah, that may definitely have been the case back then. But that's what I'm saying. Oh. Paul is then affirming the statement that they are lazy. Yeah. The, the, right, so yeah, he's that, saying that he's right. That, that's yeah, well, that, that view definitely could be there. I mean, I'm just saying based on how I've been taught, to read it it's that basically he's rebuking yeah but we know that the person you talk to read it you don't really trust everything he says anyway mm -hmm. and that testimony yeah. is true we, we we know that yeah so like, you can't rely on what you were taught is true can you well yeah plus you, the guy who taught me I, I i've broken fellowship with that that's what i'm saying to you you don't really trust the guy who tells you stuff yet you're yeah, he, 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 he's, he's behaving very cult-like and all this other stuff 
But okay, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just answer your next question about the whole thing of the, the wives and the husbands. I do believe that a wife is supposed to submit to her husband, but not to the extent of, of where she disobeys the scripture is to obey her husband because the scriptures are the final standard. So that's my position on that. What about the slave stuff? Uh, it's this, well, the, the uh, actually, what, let me go to the verse, actually. Yeah, yeah. Might be What's helpful to read The wife has to submit to the husband as long as she doesn't he doesn't tell it to go against scripture as long as, as long as the husband is following scripture then she submits to him but like if he's getting her to like disobey scripture then she can say what do no. you mean by disobey scripture what, what does that well, even I'm saying mean? Like, like commit a sin or something like that or you know do something commit wrong. sin yeah yeah commit a sin what sin well i'm saying let's just say she says hey let's go to the bar and get drunk then don't do it oh so you're not allowed to drink as a christian yeah well you, well, you can drink but it's in moderation you're allowed to drink alcohol, okay? Because alcohol, alcohol itself is not banned. It's just it's heavy drinking and drunkenness that's banned. Oh. But I'll, I'll read the Greek word for uh, because the, the it's Titus two nine it says about servants. The Greek word is is doulos, which means yeah. um, it means a slave or also a servant. You know, yeah, it's in other... plural, so it's slaves. But yeah, yeah. Uh, in this case it wouldn't be servant because you don't have to tell a servant to obey your master. Yeah, slaves have masters. Yeah there's, yeah, there's that too. But I think the, the the thing of a slave back then is that people think of it as in like the 1800s in America with the black slaves. It was actually different back then. They were they were paid. There was like they were they were paid. They were actually were better. A, a servant back then, a slave. A slave. Was actually, yeah, a slave. Because the Greek word is doulos, which means slave. Do, do me a favor, John. Uh, do you remember Onesimus from a previous letter? Onesimus. Who? Okay. Uh, so in one of the letters. So, so there, there's background noise and stuff going on. Yeah, it's probably the cat that was crawling again. He's, um, actually, he, he's actually on my uh, chair nearby, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so in one of in a previous letter, Onesimus comes to Paul. I think it's the letter to Ephesians or the Romans, if I'm not mistaken. And he says to him, uh, the, the slave, that his master is searching for him and he wants him to, he, he doesn't want to go back. And Paul sends him back with a letter saying, do not punish him on behalf of me and I will repay you whatever he took from you. So, I don't think, you know, a slave who wants to run away and hide from his master thinks of himself as a servant because he's getting paid. He ran away for a reason and he was fearful for his life to go back. Hence, Paul yeah, having to give yeah. him a letter. So yeah, it, there was that, yeah. So it does sound like it wasn't very nice, right? Yeah, I mean, it could have been in the context of, of um, actual slaves because, again, the Greek word means, is what it means slave. So, so we know it means slaves though. Like we don't have to pretend it doesn't. Like just be like forget yeah. everyone else. Forget the nine hundred people watching. It's just you and me. It means yeah. slaves, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even the Greek the word means slave too. Yeah, I mean, Paul uses it for himself allegedly in verse one, but still, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's a different word for servant in Greek. Yeah, which is news for Jesus. I mean, Acts chapter three, for example. Yeah, uh, it says I, servant. I also, yeah. also want just to briefly because I have to go in a few minutes. I have to do some stuff but I, I just wanted to briefly mention the thing of who of how the the thing of james and, and titus because mm -hmm. james is not not written to christians james is the, to the jews um which is the pauline epistles are, are for christians so so like when it seems like there's a contradiction in scripture it's likely it's likely because the portion that's contradicting is not written to the same person basically but there's only one body of christ there are not two bodies of christ well, yeah, yeah there's, there's one body of Christ, but there, mm -hmm. there again, there's there's different dispensations. So, like when when Jesus said to you know observe the Jewish customs, and Paul's condemning them again. Jesus is under a different dispensation; he's under the, the kingdom age. Paul's under the age of grace. I don't think that's true because Paul himself writes, "There is no Jew and Gentile; we are one." Well, actually, if you actually the verse in Galatians three twenty eight, Paul is simply saying that everyone's saved the same way, regardless of kindred. But there is still mm -hmm. distinction. I don't see where the distinction is drawn. Well, in Acts 16, verses 1 to 3, there is a distinction made. There is an apparent distinction made for new converts, but not necessarily with the core doctrines one must hold on to. So the dispensation cannot fundamentally be different in its core attributes. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's are, there are things that overlap dispensations, but the thing is in Galatians 3.28, basically, there's, there's also Paul says there's neither male nor female. So by that logic, I guess we're all, there's no more gender, which, which is ridiculous. That Paul I, simply... Yeah. To me, that again, the salvific uh, quality of every individual is the same in this case. So the point still goes back to the claim I was making that the dispensation is the same. 
yeah, there, there is, there is, it does overlap certain things, overlap dispensations. I would agree with that. So then, where do you disagree with what I've said? Well, I'm saying that basically that that when it seems like there's a contradiction, like when Jesus said to follow the traditions and Paul said to like where he condemned the Jewish traditions, it was because they were under two different dispensations. D does Jesus say that there were two different dispensations? Well, no, because because Jesus he he brought in what well, John the Baptist brought in the the kingdom age. And then Paul, according to Ephesians chapter three, verses one to seven, he brought in the age of grace. That doesn't line up because if Paul is, been, sorry, there's a lot of background noise. I'll just wrap up with this uh, and then we can move on to the next call. I want to thank yeah. John I, for coming I, I on. Think, I think going to anyway. Uh, hey, John, can I just say congratulations? You managed to get through a call without mentioning the pagan Catholics. What, did, you mean, yeah. what, you, what you mean the apostate pagan perversion that is roman catholicism that's it the one yeah, you still got that cross though i thought you don't recognize that cross as anything uh well there, there is like symbology in the bible picking up your cross and that kind of stuff so i keep it on there for that reason you, you know, John, pagan symbol? uh well it, it is not in a sense because there is oh it's not a pagan symbol now well there's scripture references to it but i don't use it like an idol there isn't word. it speaks of a storus but not necessarily a yeah. uh, a cross with a parabellum attached to it well, I don't, I don't bow down to like the Catholics do though, so there's not. And what, and what the swords about? The, the swords are, are, are like, you know, fight the good fight of faith. Like, like a oh, process. you use swords to fight the good fight of fight faith. No, 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 it's, it's a spiritual fight that goes on. So it's a symbolized You need that. swords spiritual to fight the sword. Fight? Well, there's a sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It looks like an iron sword to me. I, I gotta be honest with you. And what's that other flex, that kind of ribbon thing? Oh, it, it was just a little ribbon. I, I found it looked kind of cool. So like, I'll just have that as a background or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else has got this mean, mean shit m meaning, and then all of a sudden we got this pretty ribbon. John, take care, dude. All right, see you later. Right, Bye. Uh, I know that as, as that was, Muslims, we couldn't have a picture of a bomb and say, you know, this is like the spiritual bomb because we're going to blast the opponents away. Kind of thing. <laughs> oh, Can you imagine, <laughs> so you imagine if, if EFDAWA changes their logo to swords, banned, like, like, Honestly, Channel canceled, canceled, mate, canceled. Oh my Can you imagine if Hamza came onto the show and he's like, brothers, there are two different dispensations, one to the white converts, the other to the Asian Muslims. People would lose it. So, <laughs> subhanAllah. Oh my goodness. I'm so going to try him again. P.A. Okay. P.A. Is there anybody there? Knock twice if you're there. Could it possibly be that he doesn't know how to, or she doesn't know how to turn off their mute? They did do it on the last stream on Hamza's uh, Dan on, on Friday. They did do it, so they knew. Might have been pressing every key though. Come on. Oh, it's kind of weird. And they know how to join the stream. They know how to copy a link and come in. You know, if anything, you know, people like that are probably United supporters. All right. All right, so we need to talk among ourselves now because there's no Christians to come on to talk. Where have the Christians gone? They're... Oh, P.A. Um, just, um, just, um, just came back into the bat chat. Can you believe it? Burn them back on. Let, I want to see where this leads to. Oh, I've got oh, wait, that, no. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Problematic account. Is that what the P.A. stands for? Maybe. Part time, I can't use that other pessimistic word. atheist. Mm. Uh, what other PA terms can we come up with? I don't know. I'm thinking something to do with Paul, um, Paul's apostle. <laughs> oh, now we've got a Jav. I'm pretty sure Jav's going to be a Muslim, though. <sighs> Let's see. Scratching the bottom of the barrel here, man. Jav. Yes. Walaikum salam. Walaikum salam. Yeah, uh, brother Hamza, um, I've been trying so long to get onto the show, and at last I'm on the show. I just wanted to say, very so ironic about say, what's going to happen next. Oh, go on, please say, bro. Uh, yeah, just a very quick thing. I just wanted to say to you. I just wanted to say personally to you that I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, and may Allah grant jannah to your mother. But one thing that gave me a little bit of comfort when you told me that um, that she. Asked that. Yeah, um, I think I've got a slight delay here. 
I just wanted to say that I was very happy to hear that she asked you for the Quran, which means she had the intention of perhaps uh, becoming a Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always accepts good intentions. And for that, I will say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the Jannah. And that's all I wanted to say to you. And my slams to all the brothers. And I'm just happy that I got on today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. Happy that you came on. Snuck on the stream. Well done, Jeff. Here we go. I'm just going to like perma ban this person just for the sake of it because uh what this pa yeah 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 I'll, i'm gonna ban him from the studio there you go he won't be coming back now <sighs> actually that person was quite someone did post in the chat that i think their name was pessimistic uh, pessimistic atheist on the hamza's den stream on friday so it could be uh, that, that, that's what that was my guess mm. so what do we do now there's no guests they're all hiding come on christians come out from under your beds I was just going to comment upon um, since both Frank and faithful servant of Christ conceded that women are supposed to, you know, submit or obey uh, their husbands. Um, I was wondering, like, what what happens to their salvation, like, if they disobey? Because, like, if a person is saved by belief in the resurrection of Jesus, then does it mean that it's um, the belief in the resurrection becomes insufficient? If a woman, you know, d doesn't obey her husband, so it seems like at least for for women, they have to obey their husbands in order to remain in faith and not, and in order to keep their salvation. Which means Christ's death and resurrection isn't enough, or isn't sufficient, at least for women. Or wives are expected to submit or obey their husbands, you, you as well as this Christian way. slaves. You did raise this point on a previous stream, I believe, and some of the Christians did agree with this understanding. Um, for me, it does seem to be the case that an element of faith is ob obedience to your husband. F for me, what I'm what I'm also particular, uh, particularly uh, curious about, if I may read from verse 4 of chapter 2, so that they may encourage the young woman to love their husbands, to love their children. And the way in which it seems to have been articulated Women, their primary purpose seems to be childbearing, at least yeah. the way that it seems to be to me. And um, they need to be self-controlled, chaste, good managers of the household, kind, being submissive to their husbands so that the word of God may not be discredited. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I admit, I found Paul's position, like when it comes to the law, very complex and very um you know it's almost self-contradictory because he seems to like go back and forth or oscillate between must you or mustn't you keep obey the law because it seems that even though like paul says like you know you shouldn't obey like you know in titus in chapter one when he speaks about like th those jewish converts who have now converted to christianity um they're telling you to obey the law but you shouldn't listen to them but at the same time, it seems like wherever you have a gathering of more than one person, you did you do need some kind of rules and regulations so as to, you know, prevent things to go in out of hand or you have anarchy. So um, it it, it, yeah, it so it does seem that like Christians are still required to follow at least some laws. Um, in, in the book Paul the Law and the Jewish People by E.P. Sanders, he does mention in some capacity that uh, Paul is not consistent with the definition of the terms that he uses. So he yeah. might use the same term to express two mutually exclusive ideas. And that is why they tend to think that the Pauline uh, epistles seem to have been amended or uh, you know edited in some capacity, that they have not come down to us in a pure form itself. Uh, but yeah. I'm but interested. Also, this points to some kind of human, like a human element, like in Paul's mm -hmm. epistles. Like it, it doesn't seem that you know Paul was inspired or was was writing scripture during his lifetime. I mean, I mean well, you know, when I mentioned about verse chapter one, verse uh, three and four, where Paul seems to indicate that he was predestined uh, and prophesied to come about with this revelation. Have you ever heard a Christian trying to give an explanation behind this? No. 
that, that is what bothers me because as Muslims, we tend to make the claim that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was, you know, foretold, his coming was foretold. We don't mm. go into the details about that on this particular stream, but it seems as if Paul is making the same claim about himself. And if Christians were consistent, when they use this argument against us, they go into the Bible to look to see which one of these verses do you think applies to your prophet, peace be upon him. I think that we should pre press the Christians to do the same in this case. Because in previous letters, Paul did indicate that uh, the mystery of Christ was revealed to him. This is not the first time this has been stated. So it's a common theme in regards to him. I am curious as to can they defend that claim or not? Is, it, uh, is this for, uh, more to do with like um, like pre um, destination? predestination or something like no, that? Because one... he speaks about it being proclaimed. Something can only be truly proclaimed if it is stated beforehand. Okay. You know, the, like the quote, uh, make, uh, I think it's Isaiah, make, uh, make the way for the path of the Lord, clear, clear a path for the way of the Lord. It seems to have that same kind of uh, articulation. I think, Brother Hamza, if we may, we can probably bring on some Christians, uh, Muslims, sorry, rather. This is what I'm just saying to Anas now. Um, oh, this happened in the last Christian stream, if you remember as well. They, they've got nothing to say. They can't respond to what's being presented. What, what can they come on and say? They can't say nothing. They can only come on and agree that the slaves should obey their master and their wives need to submit to their husbands mm -hmm. and that the Jews shouldn't be trusted. <laughs> so they're going to go, and they, or they want to come and disagree with it. But that's what their Bible. This is what their their scriptures teaching. Yeah, but let's get some Muslims on. Yeah, we? we're going to let. All right, okay, we're opening the floor up to Muslims now because the Christians are all hiding. As somebody said in the comments, Christians come out to play. But where are they all? The warriors. Hold on, warriors come out to play. Well, wait, how do you know about the warriors? That's like decades ago, bro. The warriors. Yeah, nineteen seventy. Oh, how old are you, mate? I'm in my twenties. Right, right. So I'm 47, mate. Warriors mm -hmm. is my time, isn't it? Warriors, the Wanderers. Come on, man. How do I know about the Warriors? You're not talking to an 18-year-old, you're not, you nutter. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you weren't supporting United in the 80s and 70s. So I oh, mean, I? In the 80s? Why wouldn't I support United in the 80s? When did you begin supporting United? I've, I'm from Manchester, mate. I've always supported United. Why didn't you support, support City? Because my father was a Red. Okay, so you, my father is a red. Huh? So you you you're saying that you were indoctrinated as a child to have oh, this I grew up in I grew up in South Wales. Uh, all the all the the South Welsh lads, yeah, all Liverpool fans. It was the eighties. Liverpool winning everything. It was horrible, horrible times to be a United fan. Ian yeah. Rush and Daglish and all that nonsense. Oh, you remember Daglish? Wow, oh, yeah. bro, forty-seven, mate. Uh, yeah, but like Nazem is about your age and he doesn't know too much about football. Right? How old are you, Nazem? Uh, 40. 40? Uh, wait, hold yeah. on. I thought you were older than... Four, 40 was a baby when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 1980. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, Nazem, just give me your full name and your address and then the three-digit code on the back of your uh, card. I'll, I'll, so I'll give you my thought code. Oh, I think yeah, we've got yeah, a yeah. Christian here, Paul Saul. <laughs> I think we've got a Christian. I don't know what type of Christian we got. Sorry, Muslims. When we said we were going for Muslims, but we, oh, he went. Where did he go? Uh, he heard you call out his name and he left. Run! Relax. Anyway, by the way, you know the Warriors, yeah? Have you ever played the, 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 the game on Xbox, yeah? Next uh, I didn't, but it's by Rockstar Games, wonderful studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get through this. Let's rattle through these Muslims. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. Talios. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, well, 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 uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, my reading through this letter, I've, uh, you know, it seems to me the at least the language comes off as anti Semitic. Yeah, uh, at least in the first chapter, which you guys discussed. Uh, secondly, going to the third chapter, I saw even though in in the first uh, paragraph or uh, first few verses, at least the author at least uh, mentions that you know, for we too were once foolish, disobedient, misled, enslaved, and um, mm -hmm. kind of all all the vices that you know, being hateful and hating one another, and yet. The, he is still 
preaching hatred. So it's it's also kind of like a contradicting message. Even though they admit being hateful in their past lives, they continue to preach hate against the Jews. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of interesting to me. Uh, secondly, I wanted to ask your opinion um, because my friend, he is also a Christian. He's actually a convert uh, from Hinduism. Um, so I, I had a meeting with him yesterday and asked him to come on the stream. Unfortunately, he was not able to. So, but I did ask him to, uh, you know, review the previous streams about the historicity because I raised the point with him that your faith is based on, you know, if you, if you view Bible as a historical narrative and your theology is based on that historical narrative, then you, you ought to consider the historicity of it. So. I guess he's more involved in believing something just out of faith. So that well, conversation went nowhere. Um, so I just wanted to ask your advice. You know, what's the best way to put an evidence forward so that they at least consider the historicity argument rather than just accepting whatever they're being preached to? So te- technically, Christians will try to prove the the truth of Scripture by one of two ways, and the brothers here can give their you know if they differ, they can let me know. One is through the historicity of the documents. The second is through the prophecies. So one is rational, and the one is the other is less rational. I wouldn't call it irrational because they do base it on some things that do seem plausible. But generally speaking, if it's a Christian that does not accept the historical arguments, then 100% they're speaking about the prophecies. They'll take you through Isaiah 9, Isaiah 53. They'll take you through Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, I think. They'll take you to uh, uh, Malachi. They'll take you to Isaiah chapter 40, etc. They'll take you to those specific um, uh, references. And so inshallah, here we will be doing a stream dedicated to the uh, at least the, the the prophecy argument, so that we can say we've covered both sides of it. We're not going to go through, you know, like do an entire series on it, but I think at least one or two episodes just to get that out of the way. Yeah, definitely so. Dave Edwards, you're hiding in the chat, mate. You're calling us jokes. Come and defend it. Come and defend your religion, man. Step up uh, to the plate. I'll I'll, I'll finish it off. Um, I won't take much of your time. Uh, It's been an honor to share the platform with you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I've been listening to the streams for a while. And, uh, you know, I think so far I've only covered until John and started the poll. Um, But it's been an honor. Thank you so much. Uh, Oh, last thing. uh, I just, I know the last thing, sorry. Um, I I would just say that based on whatever the dawah that you guys do, my understanding of Islam has increased a lot. And when I view Christianity from um, a technical point of view, even either historical or theological point of view, no matter which way Christians make their arguments, it falls flat, no matter which angle they come from or whichever way they justify um, their faith from. So that has been an interesting journey for me. And that will hopefully continue. I, you know, I pray for all of you, and please pray for me. Uh, Amen. Thank, Thank you for those kind words. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we got somebody here. Green light. He says he can come on. What's, what's, what's his words? Um, where, where you, let me jump on the stream and refute your arguments. Send the link. The link is in the chat, mate. Pinned. It's pinned in the chat, and it's in the in the description of the video. So uh, I'm looking forward to you, green light, waiting for you. Pascal, is he a Muslim or? Sounds French, probably not. Pascal. Pascal. Pascal with a C. Okay, okay. yeah. Salam, bro. Wa alaikum as-salam, Ramzi. Salam, Ramzi. I just had one quick question. I've noticed uh, Titus is in... Whenever I th- when uh, kind of like the things you brought up about Titus kind of reminds me of the Old Testament, how you know there are some things in the Old Testament how Christians will kind of shove under the bus or things that Christians will kind of almost like act as if don't exist when making more arguments against Islam. Would you say Titus is almost like like a second like a like a second Old Testament in the sense that it's another thing that Christians will t- will kind of want to avoid talking about, but the same way as the Old Testament. Not, well, not to be honest with you, they do talk about the Old Testament because they love the prophecies, isn't it? That they think support them. So they're, they're very selective in what they use from the Old Testament. 
Uh, uh, moral arguments specifically, like, you know, um, what they said about a woman, a woman should submit to their husbands, you know, the comments about slaves, you know, these are kind of things that the Old Testament obviously touches on, things that Christians typically don't use in their da'wah. Um, would you say that Titus is somewhat relatable to that? They probably don't even know about the letter of Titus, to be honest with you. They probably never even read it. It's not something that the, 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 the priest is going to pick up and start quoting from in the church, is it? You know what I mean? Most Christians, just to be clear, they don't read the Bible, and those who do, they don't read it well. That's yeah. just simply what it is. That sounds um, right, but I hope you feel better, and you know, may Allah preserve you. And your but it's something that can be used against them. If anything can be learned today, use Titus against the Christians to shoot when they, they try to attack Islam. It's always barbaric, this, that, the other. It's oppressive. There you go, mate. Have, have your own Bible. I just want to answer Meg's question. She asked me what Bible do I use to see yes. the changes. This is the, uh, hold on, where is it? There we go. The right Novum here. Testamentum Greek. Yeah. Green no light, where are you, man? Yeah, come on, green light. You're going to come and expose us or refute us. Where are you? There we go. In the words of uh, Delia, where are you? Come there on. <laughs> Man, I look handsome on the screen today. No, you know, I'm still amazed sometimes that I'm still. Someone asked a question earlier, Ijaz. When you wash your face, where do you stop? Here's what that person, you know, just send me an email and uh, uh, I, I want to talk with. I want to give that person. You just don't send him a location. <laughs> 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 You'll tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though i was wrestling with that same question when i shaved my head a few weeks back yeah. and and i mean fine the hairline but then, but then the, hair, <laughs> no, the hairline was higher on one side than it was on the other side and so it's, it's it's pretty like clear for me you can see it's not that high it's like that yeah, and, it, yeah when, when you're completely shaved, yeah. where do you stop you just do the head. You're, you're there. No, you're you, there. No, when I shave it, there's still a line. There still is. Yeah, you can feel it. It's oh, like, yeah. a, uh, like a, uh, you know, those brushes that you use to like scrape off uh, tough stuff from like tough fabric. Yeah. Right? Like right. That's what it's like. It's like a Brillo pad. I don't know if you know what that is. A Brillo. Yeah, pad. yeah, yeah. So you can actually, when I do it, you can actually hit. Did you just say you? I you, I don't know if you know what that is. I don't know if <laughs> you got <laughs> that in pack. your country. I don't. I I don't know what you call it in your country. Yeah, we call it a Brillo pad, mate. I don't know what do they call it here in Canada, Sadat? What what thing is that? See, he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> a Brillo pad. A Brillo, Brillo pad. Yeah, Brillo pad. See, he, I can't believe people keep thinking I'm stressed. Honestly, I don't know where they get this idea from. There's nothing about today that I could be stressed about. There's well, nothing. you you'll be, they, they will stress you out by the end of the show. Let's see. It's it's like telling somebody you're not angry, right? Or stop stop being angry. Stop being angry. Yeah, I'm, yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah. I'm not angry. Stop being angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> I, I think it, what's happened is that you've seen Hamza in high resolution for the first time. This is just yeah, a natural state. This is just Maybe we're seeing details we never saw before. Yeah, exactly. Or... Maybe the wrinkles are showing in that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you look different without your hat as well. Like they're accustomed to the hat. <sighs> But see, see, see the 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 hat looks freaky. I'll leave it on now, though. Now, now you've said it. Yeah, yeah. Hamza looks tired, not stressed. I'm not tired, not stressed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. You do look tired. You do look tired, though. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, must be playing the arc, in it. Red pen. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Well, um, just very quick, brothers. I'm, I just have one question. I mean, I, I've been, I mean, reading. Yeah. What you've been reading? Tell us. Yeah, I'm reading the story about, you know, the French Revolution. And, you know, <laughs> like in general, they said the French Revolution is on a state and uh, the church. So is it? what leads to that uh, secular society today? Is it because the, what is problem in the Bible or is it because the church? That's my only question. The French revolution, sorry, the, the secularism that France employed was a direct response to the anarchy and the persecution that they faced when the religious authorities were in control, basically. It's a direct, you know, repudiation of that. 
because uh, what do you call it? Europe was Western Europe at least was so, I mean you had the Holy Roman Empire I think just above France so in Germany Habsburg that kind of area um, some parts of Netherlands um, some parts of uh, Belgium I think as well in that whole region you had a great deal of persecution by the church itself and so most an social anthropologists do believe sorry so uh, sociologists and historians do believe that the uh, um, the secularism that France employed was a direct response to that religious uh, persecution and extremism. All right, thank you, brothers. Zakmullah. Already, uh, thank you, Red Pen. And already by that time, you had some Christians that were protesting against the Catholic Church. After mm -hmm. which, you get the Protestant um, movement. I, I, uh, I, Alvin, for I, I, I got I got to storm the Bastille. Uh, two years ago, because when I was in Paris, there, there's a big like block of whatever you know, the big big block that is from the Bastille. Mm -hmm. So I stormed it. I just, <laughs> I just, I just ran and and jumped on it, and I said, "Yes, I stormed the Bastille." No. Subhanallah. <laughs> we have got no guests. We got no Muslims. I think it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, we've done an hour and a half. We we did. Yeah, we've done an hour and a half. That's it. Oh wait, there's Seth is back. There's a guy called Seth. Seth. I'm sure we've had Seth before though. So I'm assuming there's not going to be a Titus part two then. Oh, most definitely not. <laughs> uh, Seth, you're muted. Seth, you're muted. Seth. Um. All right, we can move Seth off. Seth, thank you for coming on. Have a good day. Thank you. Right, concluding thoughts on the Titus Brothers. Concluding thoughts. Uh, oh, okay, suck it then. Okay. So is it Cretan or Cretan? Cretan. Cretan, is that how you say it? No, it's not. You don't say Cretan. No one says Cretan. 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 Hamza, tell me I'm wrong. Just, just tell me I'm wrong. That that has to be that has to be a topic for a future live stream. I'm gonna have to ask, ask Google. Are all Cretans liars? <laughs> Try to what sort out that paradox. Okay, hold on, Hamza. Can you zoom in on? Let me see if I can get that. Come on. Some people. Oh, one, one second, one second, one second, one second. Just, just one second. Cretan. Oh, okay, Cretan. Tons. There's no I there. One second. One second. Tons. Yeah, so what do you call Cretan? people from Crete? Listen, according to Cora, Antony's answer is correct. But if you want to impress someone with your knowledge of mythology, call them Curetes. <laughs> well, that helped. <laughs> that, helped anything. that that really really helped. So everyone was wrong. Crete, <laughs> it's, it's written in my translation as Cretan. Cretan, yeah. I'm gonna Cretan. check. I'm gonna check my second translation just to prove it's, it's not Cretan. It's Cretan. Let me see what this. I've watched enough. I've watched enough, watched enough Greek. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts and all that. Right. Unfortunately, um, it does indeed sound like Cretan. Yes, it's Cret. In Greek, we call them Kritos. Kritos. Yeah, this has Cretans as well. Find me a Bible with Cretan. Okay, one second. One second. Let me the thing this. is, Cretans, Cretans is some kind of an insult what, as well, isn't it? Cretans or Cretans is some kind of uh, insult. I asked, as well. What's a Cretan? He with, Here's a definition of a Christian. <laughs> chance, uh, chance will be a fine thing on this uh, stream. What's a Cretan? Is not so murky. I feel no, like he tumbled over the couch. Uh, what are we looking for? Yeah, at him. You know, I'll just go to at him online. See what it says. Cretan. Okay. Cretan, yeah, Cretan, natives or inhabitants from Crete. What does Cretan mean? Often, often offensive. Hold on, <laughs> what hold a of Cretanism. Do you see that? Cretan. Hey, do you think that's where the term comes from? Cretan. You're a Cretan. Because Probably. Paul says that. Uh, you know what? That could be a thing. You know that, uh, Ijaz. Ijaz. That's what it seems to say here. Cre cre uh, crestimos, crestismos. Yeah, what I'm saying is, you know the word Cretan? Yeah. You're a cretin. May, maybe that is using Paul's terminology, calling them lazy and oafs and... Huh. Yeah. Potentially. 
That's where the word can come from, actually. So okay, but find me a translator with creation. I can't. <laughs> In my whole life, I was today years old to find out that it's not creation. I think you're right, uh, Hamza. Um, yeah, it looks like a Cretan as an insult word comes from this idea of of, uh, of Paul's, oh, Paul, you know, isn't it? Whoa, that, that, that they're known to have bad characteristics. So, so all the Greek Orthodox Christians on the island of Crete can can thank uh, uh, Paul for that. Yeah. Okay, the King James Bible uses Cretans. That's probably why. Uh, yeah, and I'm 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 the KJV onlyist. So what can I do? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a KGV onlyist as well too. That's right, Cretan. Yeah. Oh, green oh, like Cretan question. is the archaic form of Cretan. Ah. Oh. What's archaic mean in that sense? Old, the older usage. Oh, so, oh, right. So, okay. A bit like um, Sri Lanka used to be Ceylon. Is that Ceylon, right? Yes, mm. yes, yes. Uh, so well, Canada used to be called Upper and Lower Canada. Mm. And yeah, Trinidad it's not quite was as dramatic once as Ceylon and Sri Lanka, is it? Tr Trinidad was called Kaiwi. Or Ivy, oh. one of the two. And Be Beijing was Peking. What was England called? Oh, yeah, it didn't exist. Um, uh, the, uh, World Empire, mate. World Empire. <laughs> the em no. it just, actually, it wasn't called. It was just called the Empire. Was it? Stretch from east to west. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know uh, the historian George Lucas made a uh, trilogy, a biopic of uh, the Britain, um, and the second in the series is called The Empire Strikes Back. We ended up with six people, seven people in the back chat. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I, guys, I thought we were done. Come in and just ignoring them. All right, let's go through these. Uh, Joe, what's happening, dude? Hi, guys. Uh, do you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Well, um, just I've got one question. I know it's not about the subject. Uh, it was about hadith. About uh, I was trying to join about before yesterday about your stream, but yeah, I, unfortunately, it was kicking me off, uh, Hamza. This Friday, this Friday, inshallah, this Friday, there is another episode on Hamza's den. Is that correct, Hamza? For what? For the uh, Sunnah Rejectors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for you, um, yeah. I, just want, I want to ask about what, just one hadith. I want just to take about your opinion about that, guys. No, we don't talk about Islam on the stream, mate. Uh, come on, yeah. come on um, Friday, Friday to Hamza's Friday. den. Yeah. We've got the Sunnah uh, Rejection stream. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, no problem. Take Thank care. you, Hamza. Thank you. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Yeah, well, that's, I'm not calling it Hadith Rejectors no more. They're Sunnah Rejectors. You're going to trigger them. I can already see it. That's the plan. <laughs> Saqib! Assalamu alaikum. Wa How are you, brothers? Islam. Fantastic. Alhamdulillah. I'm feeling Alhamdulillah. a little bit stressed, though, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, you know, a question. About what? About what? Can't hear you. He's no. he's turned into R two D two. Honestly, not R two D two. Sounds like a Dalek. Doctor. Oh, Nazambo's turning. He's turning. <laughs> Bandana's on. <laughs> Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes. You're all, you're okay. audible, bro. Okay, I wanted to, to ask a question like when the Christians tell us that uh, they are justified by their spiritual experience and then when we tell them that no, <laughs> my experience can be different than yours, this doesn't mean the truth. And then they say, for you, your truth, for me, my truth. So how do we, uh, you know, like the relative truth and absolute truth. They don't believe in this. They, everything is relative. So how then we carry on from this? What do you mean? Everything? They don't believe that. Like if they they don't believe it's relative. They believe it's, they believe their truth is absolute. So, so do you mean like in the sense that um, different Christians make different truth claims, and yet all of them claim to have the Holy Spirit? He's very articulate, I have to say. If, if, if I understood, I mean, I'm just guessing, maybe he just means like the average nominal Christian on the street or the average like liberal Christian who might, maybe he's like, Christianity works for me. If Islam works for you, good for you. This is my truth. That's your truth. I mean. But that doesn't work in the face of the absolute truth, does it? Exactly. exactly. See, this, this is, and I've said this many, many times, Christianity is deciding, trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Um, so we don't recognize Christianity as true. And you, you can't have Islam true and Christianity true. You just can't. One of them's wrong. 
Okay, someone asked in the comments, are we all just going to pretend that Nazam 44 isn't wearing a purple headband? <laughs> I think that's blue. No, I think that's purple. What, what I actually you... just mentioned it. I just told him he's turning. Uh, so that, what color <laughs> does that look like to you? Honestly, blinking, it'll have his thing. It looks like yeah. purple to me. <laughs> no, no, I thought Nizam... it was red. Tamimi, what's the plan? Sarai. Well, that, that's my truth. It, it, it looks purple to me. <laughs> to me, it's red. <laughs> to Mimi. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I have a question about a verse in the Bible in Psalms 84. Okay, what is the question? It's uh, the verse says, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are Eve, ever praising you. Mm -hmm. And as they pass through the valley of Bakka, uh, the Muslims likely claim that this is about Mecca. Do you uh, guys... You're, you're uh, an Arab Christian, yeah? I'm sorry? You're an Arab Christian? No, no, I am a Muslim. Okay, alhamdulillah. Muslim. Because you just said the Muslims as if you wouldn't... Yeah, yes, yeah, like some, some Muslims okay. <laughs> will say that this is, proves our point, that this mm -hmm. is about Mecca. So uh, Brother Zakir Hussein has a um, upcoming book with uh, alongside Adnan Rashid and uh, Abu Zakaria, where they look at prophecies and intertextual um, elements between the Quran, Islamic belief, and the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. And I believe that they have covered this in their book so far. Um, is this an evidence? Potentially. However, the Valley of Bakr was about, I think, 30 miles, either 13 or 30 miles southwest uh, of Jerusalem. Um, could there be an overlap in the name? Probably. Um, does it refer to Mecca today? Potentially. The Quran, after all, does refer to Mecca as Bakr, and I think at least one ayah. So it's a possibility. Is it a distinct uh, possibility? I'm not too sure on that. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 96 of the Quran mentions uh, Makkah as Bakka. Yeah. So the only refutation of this, uh, like from the Christian side, will be that Bakka refers to a valley west of Jerusalem. Yeah, southwest of Jerusalem. Uh, okay, thank you guys. You're no welcome, problem. dude. Take care. By the way, if it's a valley of wilderness, I don't think the valley of Bakka is a total wilderness. That would more geographically, uh, sorry, uh, botanically refer to um, um, uh, the area around Bakka, if anything, the Hijaz, as opposed to the specific description of the valley of Bakka near Jerusalem. It makes me laugh. The, the Christians think they've got something with this pathetic point about holes. They don't even know what they're talking about. Don't worry, the Quran streams are coming. Um, you'll only get a chance to come on though if you responded to the Christian streams, the Bible streams. Muhammad Al Mumani. Salam alaikum. I said salam alaikum. He's unmuted. He could be fixing his mic because there's absolutely maybe, no maybe, audio. Maybe, 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 maybe. I mean, the surname does look a little bit dodgy to me. Al Mumani. Yeah. All right, it's done. AK. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hey, Hamza, smile, man. I learned a lot from you from Speaker's Corner. Alhamdulillah. You good, you good guy. Um, I'm Muslim. I'm awesome guy, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're cool, man. I appreciate it. Um, I'm from uh Washington D.C. from the United States. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we watch you out here. Um, I kind of I kind of spread you guys as uh, YouTube out to the family because I'm like I learned a lot of you know um, dawah from you guys. Uh, I don't know much about my religion. I'm not going to sit here and lie, but I, I just kind of believe in the simple concept of one God. But I started as I get starting to get a little bit you know more mature. I was like, let me dig into it some more to make sure you know the faith is is real. But I want to ask you a question. There's a lot of there's about two things that kind of bothers me or I'm just not understanding in full. Or, and, and that's on me, too. I, I should do better research. But this this is part of it right here. Um, and, and a lot of my Christian I have a Christian friend. We always talk about God and he's Christian and he always hits this on me. And maybe you guys can clarify it for me. Um, I don't know. Short in a short manner, I guess, because I don't want to 
take up everyone else's time, but two things. One is, again, I didn't read it, so I can't say, but I'm just going to ask. When, it's, when, when, when they say, you know, the beat of the wife, is that word really in the Quran or is it not? And then what does that really mean? I know, you know, I've heard of, you know, you separate yourself you're from them, from the bed, and it's like the last resort. My brother, Sorry. you're gonna have to forgive me. It's the wrong stream for this. Okay. We don't we don't speak about Quran or Islam on this stream strictly. Uh, strictly. Uh, uh, all right, it's just really what, what, what I recommend for you um, mm -hmm. in two weeks' time on mm -hmm. EF Hour, we've got the floor is yours. Okay. So on on that stream, we invite subs to come on and just ask what they like. Okay, can I ask you, is there a YouTube that maybe you, you guys already have that's not like an hour long that kind of just talks, you know, the, the, that main uh, argument or whatever? Yeah, um, I mean, I have, a, I have a debate, Speaker's Corner one, about beating your wife on EF Tower um, from Hyde Park, where I'm debating a Jewish guy on this point. Okay. Well, you, might, I, I, you, you won't just pick up the pointers. You'll pick up how to utilize them and respond to uh, the claims. The point is, it's a very simple point. I'm, I'm not going to go deep into it. Yeah, I don't um, need it. There's just, many things in the just, Quran. There's many mm -hmm. things in the Quran which are not elaborate. And we use, mashallah. This is this leads on to the next thing. And we have the Sunnah of Muhammad, the, the teachings of the Prophet, and how to understand these things. Yeah. So when you understand the, the Sunnah, Hadith rejects mm -hmm. pay attention. Um, when you understand the Sunnah, then these verses are not problematic whatsoever. All Understood. Right? Yeah. Uh, AK, th th yes. there is a there's a video I'd like to recommend. It, it's called uh, "Hitting Women That's Messed Up" by Noman Ali Khan. There you go. Oh, so I know. You, I've you, heard of him. Okay. You can watch that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And. Uh, also, ask your Christian friends about certain passages in the Bible as well, like Psalms chapter 13, verse 24, about hitting children with a rod. Um, ask oh, them what wow. that means. That. Okay. Is that to be taken literally? Is that figurative? What does that mean? Right. I mean, uh, there's also in the Hebrew Bible, if you know your, your husband is in a fight and she hits the other man in his testicles, then you have to, uh, I think, cut off her hand, if I'm not mistaken. I think she grabs mm -hmm. his testicles, isn't it? Fine. You're gonna to touch it either way, Hams. Uh, not you. You know what I mean. They, they, what, I whatever. Said the, I thought he said hits him in his testicles. It could be either or. I'm not sure. But the point is, know. the point is, what's worse, getting hit or getting your hand chopped off? For it is true. And someone just said here on the video as well uh, on EF Tower, everybody's born a Muslim, which is another high park one. I, I go into this quite uh, deeply as well, inshallah. So check those out. Uh, I will. Thank you. If, if anyone can share the link in the chat, I'll try to grab it from there. If not, I'll search it. And uh, are you guys going back to Hyde Park anytime soon? COVID Five restrictions days. lifting, inshallah. Hopefully May, June time, I reckon. Summer. Inshallah. All right. Thank you, brothers. Take care, dude. Great job. Awesome. Nice guy. I like nice guys. All right. Ahmed. Salam Oh, what Marnie. Yes, Ooh, that's what Marnie again. All yeah, right. yeah, oh, that's Marnie me. flex. No. That's the second time I've seen that word. Yeah, uh, you guys hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, just one yes, second. Sir. Um, uh, what's his name, brother Anis? You can put the link back out because Faithful Theology wants to get on. He is a Christian, and I think uh, he's a nice guy. Yeah, let's have him on if possible. I'll just put it in the chat now. We'll not pin it though. Yeah, guys, this is strictly and only for Faithful Theology because we are wrapping up. Could I just read Surah 4, Ayah 34 from Dr. Mustafa Khattab's translation? Would that be okay? Yeah. So verse 34 says, Men are the caretakers of women, as men have been provisioned by God over women and tasked with supporting them financially. And righteous women are devoutly obedient, and when alone, protective of what God has entrusted them with. And if you sense ill conduct from your women, advise them first, if they persist, do not share their beds. But if they still persist, then discipline them gently. He uses the word discipline here. And I believe that there is a um, precedent for that. The, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, study Quran, I think, explicates upon this, that it does not have to necessitate um, harming or hurt in any capacity. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, and, uh so just also in the in the in the um, in the fiqh literature, that same verb daraba is sometimes used for the striking of the 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 uh, the ground for tayammum. You mm -hmm. know, when so when you don't have water to do wudu, 
and you strike the ground and you do wudu. So the point being, everybody knows you don't strike the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's you they tap the gently, ground with some dust yeah. and you uh, and you do a uh, kind of a ablutions with the dust. Yeah. All right, we're gonna let Ahmed speak now. Oh, I thought. Sorry, yeah, Ahmed. Yeah. Sorry. No so I, I just want to speak on the, the story of the resurrection of Jesus in the Bible. So uh, we as Muslims believe that he was raised and not uh, crucified. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, like, um, when I open the Bible in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, I think verse 8, it speaks about when the woman uh, found the uh, tomb empty. And it says that um, they were afraid and they didn't tell anyone. But uh, when I open the Gospel of Matthew, I think in chapter 28, verse 8, uh, he said uh, um, that uh, the woman uh, told the disciples, so you have here a contradiction. And uh, surprisingly, when I opened the NIV Bible, and, uh, I think there was a footnote in chapter 16, verse 8, that states, uh, verses, nine, uh, verses 9 to 20, are not in the oldest and most reliable manuscripts. So, like, uh, are verses 9 to 20 in Mark 16 not in the oldest manuscripts, really? Uh -huh. And what do, what do the scholars say if you have the knowledge that's elaborate? So are you referring to Matthew chapter 28, verse 8? Yeah. Okay, give me a moment. Forgive me. And also, and also Mark chapter 16, verse 8. So in Mark 16, Nazam can correct me here, but uh, there is no resurrection story in, in, in that uh, gospel narrative. Um, verses 9 to 20 are definitely later additions. Um, their authenticity cannot be validated otherwise. Um, in regards to Matthew chapter 28, verse 8, scholarship generally recognizes that the author of Matthew expanded upon or clarified what uh, Mark did not clarify himself. Um, you said that there was an interpolation on verse 8. I'm just going to check that now. Just give me one moment. Uh, was it Matthew? So Matthew 28, this last chapter. Is there a variant here? Uh... Okay, verse 8 reads, uh, here we go. Um, so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Is that what you were referencing, brother? Yes, yes. What did you say the NIV note says here? There's a footnote after verse, uh, in chapter 16, verse 8, that says that verses 9 to 20 are not in the oldest and most reliable. Oh, sorry, I thought you said Matthew chapter 28, verse 8. Yeah, I, re I referenced both Mark uh, chapter 16, verse 8 and Matthew 28, verse 8. So you're asking, is it a contradiction? Yes, it is a contradiction. And do you believe that um, that uh, chapter verses 9 to 20 are not in the oldest manuscripts? Like, is there uh, proof and it, evidence from these followers? Yeah, plainly, they're not in the earliest manuscripts. That, that is not in doubt at all by almost anyone. The only people who don't believe that are KJV only is. But there are such a small minority of people that... So also the, um, you know, the um, Eastern churches, um, I think like yeah. some of the Eastern Orthodox, they have the longer ending of Mark. I think they consider it to be offended. From the majority text, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I see. We've got some, uh, we've got some Christians in the chat, so I'm going to have to say goodbye, Ahmed. Sorry, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, sorry, Ahmed, I would have loved to have continued. <laughs> but, sure. All right. How you doing, bro? Hey, how's it going, guys? All right, man. Okay. I have a question for you, uh, Faithful Theology. Uh, okay, yeah, shoot. Yeah, okay. Are you on a bed? Yeah, I'm laying down on my bed. Okay, because I'm going to be honest with you. Every time we've seen you, you're always, like, bending over something. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I've I'm, always I'm laying been on my bed with a laptop yeah. on uh, top of okay. a pillow. Did I anyone else kids. have that question? So. I have three kids, so if I go out there to our computer room chaos. thing, yeah, it's going to be chaos. I think we met your son on Friday night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Hamza. yeah. yeah that's Lovely Isaiah. Kid. Okay. Lovely kid, very pleasant little chap. All right. Uh, apparently, Hamza is speaking to Casper the ghost. All right, hold on. Yeah, right. yeah, Casper the friendly ghost. Okay. Well, uh, did you have a question or a statement to make? Uh, no, I mean, I just came on because I seen no Christians would uh, enter. I actually joined the show late. So, what is the topic? Is right. Titus. Uh, um, Authentic is that the time? You know what streams are about, isn't it? Well, he's just I'll, realized. He's just I, realized. I'll be honest. I I haven't really followed you guys that much. I, 
usually you every should. time I come on the stream, I, I join. So, but so, I so, actually so, just happened to, to hop on. Yeah. Do you believe, by the way, do you have a name that we can call you or should we just call you Faithful or something? You can call me Richard. That's my real name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice you can call name. me whatever. I don't care. I don't think I should call you whatever. Right? That's so, fine. <laughs> I got tough skin. I can handle it. You're a big guy. You look like Mountain from uh, uh, Game of Thrones, to be honest. But in any case. Yeah, I'm 6'2", 300 pounds. I'm a pretty big guy. Yeah, I'm definitely not 6'2", for all the interested sisters out there. Um, so, Richard, <laughs> I'm going to get cancelled. Uh, Richard, uh, so do you believe that Titus is um, authentic? I'll be honest, I've never really looked at the history behind Paul's letters. I've really never cared. If Paul didn't write those letters, then we have another writer. So, mm -hmm. that it, so who was that writer? Th that's the question we were asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it kind of favors the Christians then, because then we have another writer testifying to the gospel. That wouldn't that's account not for mentioned. much. Historically, that would not count for much, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if, if, because this person, whoever is writing this, claims that Paul received revelation at least in verses two to three. If that is the case by Paul, right, and this person is pretending to write in Paul's name about Revelation, then basically they would be dishonest. And if they are dishonest, then they cannot be taken from. Because as the letter itself says, they, uh, you know, Paul actually rebukes people who are deceivers. Uh, so in this case, if they're deceiving, it's a self-refutation and thus they would be unreliable. I, I haven't read Titus in a while, but it, it's not long, correct? It's like what, like maybe four chapters, three chapters? Three chapters. Yeah. Three chapters. And it's he's writing to Titus to the church. So, I mean, there, there's nothing in the letter that's really discerning, is there? In what I sense? mean, there's not really much in the letter. Apart anyway, from the, it's just uh, about the pastoral. The anti-Semitism part. Richard. The anti-Semitism is in there. With, with the Jews. But, I mean, mm. what, one thing I... I I have mm -hmm. noticed with Paul at times, it's like he almost contradicts himself with his writings. Hundred percent. So, so I'm really not here to. I mean, um, doesn't Paul himself Paul. say? Doesn't Paul himself say, "For the Lord thy God is not a Lord of confusion." Yeah. And then, if he contradicts, then there is confusion. Therefore, by, it, by well, if it contradicts, um, then that would mean that it's a different author, isn't it? Yeah. And then if the different author is well, not Paul... I don't know because the letters that they attribute to Paul, that scholars say that Paul wrote, it's almost like they contradict. It's almost yeah, like Paul you know, contradicts it's... himself in You don't believe letter. the letters of Paul are the word of God, though, do you? I'm, I mean, I'm really not going to get on here and defend Paul. There's not, like Some of the things Paul say go against what Jesus said. So do you believe it's the word of God? Hamza, we had this conversation yeah, on Friday. It's in the Bible. Yeah, we had this oh, on no, Friday. I'm just drilling into exactly. him again. Say again. Gonna... That's fine. You can drill into me. I, I really don't. I've never really looked at the scholarship of Paul, though. I really just oh, came on that. here because no other Christians would. But one thing I will say with Paul is um, there's times he contradicts Jesus. Like Jesus says, don't eat meat sacrificed to idols. And then Paul writes like it's okay to the Gentiles. And then but in then, the book of Revelation, Jesus being, says... But isn't Paul Jesus. receiving revelation from Jesus? Well, but there's Richard, things... There's things that Paul writes that obviously weren't revelation from God because he he says, I baptize people, whether I baptize any others, I know not. That's not something that God could write. Because, Richard, Richard my, my question would be, who like, um, for, forgive me for for putting it like this, I'm just being direct, right? It's like, like wait, who, yeah, yeah, who, be direct who, as you want. Yeah, who who has a gun pointed at your head, forcing you to accept the Bible as God's words? When you're saying, you're telling us, from what I'm understanding, that you don't know, you're not sure 100 percent who wrote these letters. Whoever wrote these letters, some of them, uh, some of the statements in these letters contradict what Jesus said, um, and not all of it is God's revelation. So. Uh, but you still believe it, you said, because it's in the Bible. Well, well, so so who, well, who, who, is, I, who is coercing you? Who, what, what is coercing you or forcing you to well, accept it just because it's the Bible? Well, well let me be honest. I, uh, for most of my life, I never really read the Bible. 
I went to a church on occasion, but this past year I've actually opened it up and got into it for myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the journey, so I might not be there all the way. I'm still learning, but I am starting to look at. You need all to get off the bus, the... mate. You need to get off the bus. I, I am. It's a process. You, I mean, it's not I'm, going I'm, where you thought it was. I'm, I'm learning. Put it that way. I, I notice things that Paul says that contradict Jesus, and I notice there are contradictions in the Bible. I'm learning. I'm going back. I'm looking at what Josephus wrote. Paul received revelation from Jesus. Do you believe Paul? As of, was... as of right now, yeah, I, I, I almost have to because that's what he just gen... said, though. That's what but, he just said. That's I, why I got you. said, "Who's got a gun but, to your head?" You but, know, but it but makes listen, no sense. But listen, no one went to the Gentiles but Paul. So okay, if... but Jesus, Jesus said, "Don't go to the Gentiles." That's what I'm saying. So without Paul, really, we have no. Well, Jesus no didn't come for you, mate. Almost. Jesus didn't come for you. His mission wasn't for you. Clearly, he said that. Go ye not to the Gentile. That, that's what I'm saying. So the only per, the only person that we have to stand on okay, as I see Gentiles what you're saying. is Paul. I mean, but, who else but, in the Bible really went right. to the Gentiles? But, but, but do, it wasn't do, do, James. It wasn't Peter. Yeah. It wasn't no, but John. Jesus said, don't go to them. That's why the disciples never went to them. Yeah, but I'm a Gentile, so I kind of have to defend Paul. Well, no, no but, because that, no, because Jesus didn't come for you. But faithful, for, uh, do you understand that from our perspective, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he 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 came to Gentiles. He in in the sense that he came to all of humanity. The Quran, the Quran calls him Rahmatul Lil Alamin. He's a mercy for all of mankind. So that means Jews and Arabs and Blacks and Whites, Easterners, Westerners. So th there, there is an alternative. It's not the case that, well, you know, w without Paul, there's, there's no guidance that speaks to me. There's no scripture that is intended for me. There's no prophet that was sent to me. Our answer is that the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent for the entire world. I, I, am, I do plan on reading the Quran. I haven't read it yet. So right now, the only knowledge that I have is Paul was for the Gentiles. Under whose authority? Under stay under loud, Jesus, Did, under, you, under Jesus, you haven't read the three different Damascus stories. No, no, no. But whose authority <laughs> does he? No, who gave Paul the authority? The, you mean the voice that Paul heard? <laughs> yeah, the well, different. No, well, uh, how do we know Paul heard a voice? How do we know we, Paul heard we, a voice? In all honesty, we don't know. Right, There's we, no we way know Paul I can test, prove that. So Paul is the one who's making himself, giving himself this authority. I agree. There's things that, that seem fishy about Paul. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. So that's the Paul point. Paul calls here. himself an apostle. Uh, Jesus only had the twelve. Who appointed Paul as the thirteenth? That's the whole principle here. So and why he's a Paul... self-appointed. He's a self-appointed person who was preaching all sorts of stuff. Summoned to Jerusalem by the disciples of Jesus. Held accountable for what he was preaching. Retook the Nazarite vow to demonstrate he wasn't teaching these things. Just can't be trusted. So when I ask this question, do you believe the letters of Paul are the word of God? Your answer should be a categoric, no, I don't. But you know that causes a bigger problem for you. So you're trying to hold on to it. Hence, Sadat asking you, who's got a gun to your head? Why? Why? Just admit it. It doesn't make sense, well, none of it. Well, I want my cake and I have to eat it too. So. But no, I want to give you a better cake. <laughs> I, want to give you, I want to demonstrate to you that your cake is not what you think it is. One yeah? second, Nazam, can you just get the cake from behind you? Let, <laughs> we, we want to show you a better cake. Look at look at look at what we can offer you. What's he got? Has he got a cake? He's got cake, yeah. Oh, no messing around. <laughs> See, we, we all, we've That's been funny. waiting for. I'm going to be honest with you. That looks like a Christian cake. We're talking chocolate <laughs> jackal cake. Here. We're talking next level cake here. That's not a cake that I'm going to present to you, mate. We're talking. Forget what you've seen in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. We're talking next level, yeah. And so the cake you want to eat, we have it for you. But, it, you but I will be it. honest. There are times where Paul contradicts himself from one chapter right to the next agreed so it can't be the Night word of god can it? so it can't be the word of god can it no there we go always a pleasure richard we'll see you next time yeah yeah so I, I, i'm gonna read the quran this week and i'll Inshallah. come back and tell you what Please i think. do like i said in ramadan on hamza's den i'm going to be reading the quran every day 12 pages from beginning to end for 30 days april the 12th will be the first day or April 13th, maybe. Um, 
Watch it. You'll enjoy it. I'll do yeah. my best maybe English maybe send you a free like, copy. Like, yeah, we, we can maybe send you a free copy. You a copy. Yeah, I, 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 no, you can get everything on the tablet. I mean, that's free. That's how I read everything PDF. But there's oh, a okay. particular translation that we like specifically. It's the clear Quran. Yeah, this is the best translation because it's written in modern English. And there are footnotes to help, like, if you don't understand certain terms or, or you know, like a historical background of something, it actually provides it. So Okay, if, I'll, I'll download that, that one, the clear Quran. Yeah, you can get it on Quran.com. It's like the first translation, so yeah. Okay. Just so you know, this is Meg. Meg used to be like you, mate, until she woke up. These are hardcore Christian ladies, Meg and Shelley, who were really into the church. Until they realize what you've realized, it, this can't be true. Yeah, but that well, Paul definitely contradicts himself, and there, yeah. there's teachings that he has that goes blatantly against what Jesus said. I'm not going to deny that. I mean, anyone right. that's read it is it's common sense. Richard, you're on your way, mate. Don't worry, get off that bus soon. All right, take care, dude. Have a good. Yep, day. you guys have a good one. Ta -da. Nice, I like I like Richard. He's a really nice guy. Really nice lad. Good kids too, you know. Mashallah. Yeah, Mashallah. All right, we've got two more guests to get through. Um, I don't know about Dave, though. Dave reminds me. There was a Dave. What was Dave saying in that last stream? Remember, our hands is dead. I can't remember. Uh, to, be honest, to be honest, that stream was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you had, like, two people come on, like, six times each with, like, multiple <laughs> identities. So they're, trying, they're, me. Trying, they're trying to break the troll trap. <laughs> You're right. What's happening? He spells, it with, he spells it with two R's. There's one R. No, there's two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, your as in your and right as in oh, right. Oh, God. I would ban him just for getting the word your wrong. Yeah. And he's got a fox. And a, is that. Um, Looks like a. a what's a that thing? Porcupine? That? Porcupine? Uh, Beaver? Ah, it's out of that, you know, um, groundhog. It's a groundhog. It says a wolf on a groundhog? Yeah, I reckon so. You know, Reminds thank, of the, the movie Groundhog Day. Th th thank God we're not zoologists. I'll just say that. <laughs> anyway, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello there. Can you hear me? We can hear Hi, you. Dave. You were the one on the street on Hamza's Den, wasn't it? On the arena. That's right. Yeah, the other night. I think it was, went on to like one o'clock in the morning, as I recall. Yeah. What was that silly point you came with? We can't remember it. Um, it was something to do. I can't remember myself. It's something to do with genealogy. Oh, so you forgot about it. You just thought no. it was missing. <laughs> How are you doing anyway? Are you okay? I'm all right, Dave. Go on. What's your point? Oh, Quickly, uh, wrapping up. Yeah, you were talking about Paul. You were saying that Paul oh, yeah. contradicts Jesus. I, I I can't see why you'd think that because Paul taught the same thing that Jesus was teaching. Well, we've just had a Christian just tell say it was a Christian guy who'd just been on. You know that Richard? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm watching that. Yeah. Yeah, and he said, no, he doesn't. He contradicts him. Right. Obviously, he's not looked at it a bit. Obviously, he hasn't looked into more in depth than I have, you see. Because I can oh, prove to Paul taught the same thing as Jesus. I can do that well, on the stream well, tonight. Really? It, yeah, yeah. We, we can go through the Bible if you like. If you've got a Bible there, it's fine. I don't mind doing that. Go on, then. That's all right with you guys. It's your show. Hold on. Can, can you... What was the... I'm going to be honest. I was kind of distracted. Yeah. What was the first point he made? Yeah, that guy was saying that Paul contradicts himself and he doesn't yes. teach what D Jesus taught. So I just want to set the record straight. Paul did not contradict, and I can show you through the Bible that he didn't, if that's okay with you guys, just to set that record straight. Okay, brilliant. Um, Matthew chapter okay? 5, verse 19. I've got um, I've got chapters here, if you like, and you can have a look, if that's all right with you. Well, you're so going to prove got... he agrees or disagrees? He agrees with, he, with Jesus. Okay. Yeah? If you so, go to John 14, yeah. verse 6... Could, um, could, could we start by going to Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 where we well, see is it okay to just the... do this just so I can make a point so then and then if you if you think it's wrong then that's fine but I'd rather do this show you this just so you you know where the Christ, where the true Christians are coming from Go not these wishy-washy Christians that come on and deny the faith I'm not one of those Christians Dave, Dave, Dave what, what, why do you why do you believe what you're reading is reliable because of all do you know the Bible is full of prophecy full of prophecy and I've got it all. I've got all the prophecies in front of me what right prophecy? here. What are we talking about? So there's prophecies in the Bible. About Many what? prophecies. About uh, what? I'll just 
Maybe well, let's this, do this time because I've, I have got them. It's not a problem. That, and that question can be answered. I have got the prophecies here. But I'd rather deal with this Paul thing first so we don't go off okay. track too much. Okay. What is, the, what is the verse in chapter 14 of John? John 14, verse 6. Jesus replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Okay. Now, if you go to Matthew eleven twenty seven. Matthew eleven twenty seven. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, that is hilarious. Jordan, it is hilarious. Okay. Matthew chapter 11. 11 if, you're 27. Not, if you're not subscribed to, if not following Jordan on TikTok, uh, you're missing out on some excellent content there. All right. Let me see here. Matthew 11, what verse? Matthew eleven twenty seven. Matthew eleven twenty. I like how that, that rhymes. By the way, um, oh, okay. I'm a for rhymes. Okay, uh, twenty seven. <laughs> All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Himself. Okay. Now Paul writes in Ephesians two verse eighteen. This is Paul writing. He says. For through him, Jesus, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. And Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, no one comes through the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew, no one knows the Father except the Son, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And Paul agrees with that because he says we have access to the Father through Jesus Christ. So there's number one. Paul agrees with that, with the book of John. Let's on those two, it, and the book of Matthew, it, Paul's in agreement. Totally Dave, in Dave, that, Dave, that Dave, 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 Dave. Dave, you've got to do the other way around, mate. You, you've got to challenge the contestants against this. You can't say, oh, this sounds like what this says. No, no, so, that's exactly that's exactly what he's saying. That's exactly... I've got other ones as well. It's not a problem. No, let me just respond to that point quickly. On John yeah, yeah. chapter 14, no verse 26, when Eliyahu yeah. ascended into heaven, did he need Jesus then? Sorry? When Elijah ascended into heaven... Right with the chariots around him, did yeah. he need or did he know a Jesus at that time? At that time, which passage are you referring to? Is it the Old it's Testament? The, yeah, it's in the Old Testament. Just look at yeah, which the, passage uh, is that. There are two locations, I have to give them to you now. Uh, Elijah, just like search Elijah ascends to heaven. Okay, it is uh, Second Kings chapter three, sorry, chapter Second Kings chapter two, verses three to nine, I believe. I'm just finding now. I've got a study Bible here, you see, so that gives you notes as well. So it's Second Kings chapter two, verse uh, three to verses three to nine, I think. Right. Okay. I'm nearly there. It's a big book, the Bible, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 all right. Uh, a lot it's of huge. things is a bit longer. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got Elijah ascends to heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it one it says it came to pass the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven? Is that correct? The whirlwind? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So which bit do you want me to read? No, I'm just pointing out that he ascended to heaven to the Father directly. That is what the Lord means in this case. And he didn't need to know Jesus to ascend to the Father. Well, I think you're conflating the point there. Paul is saying now no, not in the Paul. New Testament. John 14, 6. Not Paul. John 14, 6. Yeah, but I'm making the contrast between what Paul is saying and what Jesus is saying. So in order as us as Christians to have access to our Father, which is God the Father in the Bible, it's in spirit. We do it in spirit, and Jesus gives us that Holy Spirit so we can Dave, have that communion with God. We can have that 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 relationship Dave, 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 with God. That's, that's not the point. Dave, Dave, yeah? Dave, so that's the, the point. That's, 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 not the point that's not the point I'm making. That's not the point I'm making. You claim John well, the old, 14, 6. passage in, in the Old Testament has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, about Paul uh, one, and Jesus. Forget Paul. Really forget Paul. I'm, just, I'm only dealing with your first point that John 14, 6 and Matthew, whatever, uh, Matthew 11, 27, that they preach the same message. I'm saying to you, John 14, 6, I'm using just those two references only. That was your first point. That John 14, yeah. 6 says, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. I'm That's saying to funny. you, Elijah ascended directly to the Father, which is proof by yeah. contradiction. But what you, what you have to, I can answer that question. It's not a problem. All the Old Testament prophets, if you look at Old Testament prophecy, the beginning from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it talks about this seed, the seed and the Messiah that's going to come. There's going to be a new covenant. Really, you're ignoring the quite Dave. You admit you're ignoring the not, question. You're cutting me off now. You're cutting you're, me off. Because you're missing the question, mate. I'm not you're missing not the, the question. question. 
You're answering something I've been asked. Dave, Dave, what is my question? Can you repeat the question back to me? You were saying in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Exactly. So you're saying, does that apply to Elijah who was taken up in the whirlwind in the Old Testament? Is that correct? Directly to the Lord, yes. It does. Yeah. Right, okay. In the Old Testament, okay, Jesus was not manifested in that time, okay? He still mm -hmm. existed in heaven with the Father, okay? But in the Old Testament, they had the law, okay? So they were under the law just as Jesus was under the law. But, that, that's not what I asked but you. But if you read the whole of the Old Testament, it's talking about this everlasting everlasting covenant and God's salvation, which is found in Jesus Christ. Right, so so the, you have to look at the whole Bible. Isn't the everlasting covenant conditional? Sorry? Isn't the everlasting but, but covenant Hamza, conditional? Hamza, I, yeah, I, wanna, I, wanna, I just want to keep them on this point. You're a sinner and come to Jesus and accept right. him as no, Lord. No, he doesn't say that at all in the Old Testament. Right. Yeah, talking Right, so yes, Dave, it does. Dave, Dave, you're just preaching, me. You're just preaching. Dave, I'm not preaching. I'm preaching. You're right, you're just saying, Dave, you're no just saying things in a vacuum. Look, look, you're doing a few things. You're saying things in a vacuum. You're trying to go into preach mode, and you're quoting from the Bible as if it's a reliable source of information. It is a reliable source of information. No, it's not. How do you know how many manuscripts we have of the New Testament? And the how Old many Testament? do you have? Five over five thousand. Oh, oh, really? How, how many of them? How when? many do you have in the Quran? Dated from what? What's the Quran got to do with anything? Well, you're saying you're saying to me the Bible's not a reliable source of information, right? So aren't you? No, no, so no, no, no. You, I'm saying to you, why do you believe the Bible is a reliable source of information? What's because, that got to do with the Quran? Because what I'm trying to say to you is the wealth of information that we have on the Old and New Testament is overwhelming. We've got historical evidence. Who told you that? Okay, and we have, you hang that? on, hang on. We have historical evidence and we have archaeological Dave, evidence. Dave, 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 Dave. Right, so you're, you've asked me a question and I'm answering I'm, I'm going to say something to you. Answer. Dave, do you know which channel you're on? I know EF Dower. Right. How long have you been watching EF Dower? Not very long. I've seen you at Speaker's Corner. No, no, no. Forget Speaker's Corner. Forget, forget Speaker's Corner. Well, you do dower at Speaker's Corner. Oh, don't I you? know yeah. I do. But, but, but right, Dave, Dave, so please, I do watch Dave, it. Dave, just listen to me, please. Because we're not going to reinvent the wheel now. All right. If you go to EF Dower playlist, yeah, Historicity Streams, you will mm. see how we've gone through the whole, all the books of the New Testament. This is why we're up to book letter to Titus mm. today. Yeah. And we've took, we've gone through all your manuscripts. Yeah, he just he knows all of your manuscripts. He give you their names. He'll tell you the dates. It's not what you think it is, okay? And I would suggest you start with the crucifixion, because we started with the historicity of the crucifixion outside of the New Testament. Then we did the historicity of the crucifixion within the New Testament. Then we went through the letters. Uh, sorry, the book of Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, going through all of the manuscripts all their names, all their dates, all the church files who referred to them, then we show the internal inconsistencies within these scriptures. You need to go and watch those, yeah? Because everything we say is in detail, and I'm going to do this for you, Dave. If you'll do this, right, I'm going to make it easy. You like the book of Matthew, yeah, with all its prophecies. Is that right? Yeah, brilliant, yeah, good Beautiful. book. What I want you to do, and this is my promise to you, Dave, I will dedicate one Sunday to Dave, right? And what you're going to do, you're going to sit down, you're going to watch, I think it's three streams we've done on Matthew or two? Three. I think we did three streams on the book of Matthew. I want you to get pen and paper out, and I want you to watch those streams. And any you think, anything you think we got wrong, I want you to write it down. And then I'm going to dedicate a whole stream to you, two, three, four hours. I don't mind, Dave. And we're going to go through all of your uh, uh, objections. Fair enough? I could do that. I don't have a problem with that at right. all. Right. We're going like to leave said, this. I... We're going to leave this conversation here. Okay. Yeah. We're going to leave this conversation here because all the premises you're coming with to support what you're saying we've refuted. You haven't refuted uh, that. You haven't refuted it at all. No, no, we have. We've we've done a one year of refuting the New Testament. One year. We started in COVID March last year, and we've just reached a year now, and okay. we're still continuing, okay. right? So why why do you use the New Testament then to say Muhammad's in the Bible? I don't That's use the New Testament. To, I don't use the te New Testament sorry, to validate sorry, the Old anything. Testament. Dave, don't I don't use the Old Testament. Muslims use Isaiah Dave, 42 to Dave, prove Muhammad. Dave, I do not need to validate Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Islam, or the Quran, opening a Bible, mate. 
Yeah, what? but most the of you are Muslim. Isaiah forty two, right? What the is reason Isaiah I open a Bible. About Muhammad? The reason I open a Bible is because you guys believe it's true. And right. we know in this is Isaiah forty two about Muhammad or Jesus. They, they, it's not about Jesus, is it? Right. So why why do you say the Bible can't be trusted yet you use it to try and prove Muhammad? That, I didn't that's say that. Didn't. I didn't say that, did I? You guys right, use Isaiah me, forty two for Muhammad. Dave, that's Dave, inconsistent. Dave, Dave. Let me just establish a principle with you, and you might understand. The, the Quran tells us the previous revelation have been corrupted. Okay. The Quran tells us this truth also there. And the Quran is the filter that we look at the previous revelations with. Okay. So if we look at something in the in the uh, Old and the New Testament in the previous revelations, which echoes of revelation, and, we, and it confirms what the Quran says, or the Quran confirms it, we have no issue with accepting this. Okay. The Quran tells us that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, was mentioned in previous revelation. Which ones? Okay, previous revelation. Okay, and therefore we can look for it. It doesn't mean it's there. Now, for example, Isaiah forty-two. I don't think it can fit anyone but Muhammad, peace be upon him. To be honest with you, but I'm going to repeat myself, Dave. I don't need to open a Bible to demonstrate Islam is the truth, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is who we claim to be. I don't need a Bible, mate. We don't need. Well, you're to making a logical fallacy now, sir. What logical fallacy? Islam came many centuries after Which Christianity, right? Like, no, no, Hang no, on. sorry. Uh, let Which me finish. logical fallacy? I'm telling you. What? No, I'm give me the name you. of the fallacy I've committed. It's called the fallacy of false assumption, okay? What false assumption yeah. did I make? Yeah. Or what fallacy is that? Let me explain, okay? Historical precedent, right? Islam came many centuries after Christianity, right? Right. So Islam, right? Listen, what Islam had the burden of proof, not Christianity. The Bible I'm sorry? says... The, pr the burden of proof is on the Quran, not the Bible. The Bible tests and judges the Quran. Okay, so when the Bible and the Quran contradict each other, what are you talking about? The Bible, what are you talking why about? Listen, why did it let me finish instead of keep interrupting me? Okay? I'll tell you why. Because you're the, doing it again. No, I'm not doing anything again. You're you are. not listening. You're not no, listening. No, no, you're doing it again, Dave. You're, you're presenting not me a principle based upon a premise that we've already refuted. You haven't refuted it. The Bible. Right, you're, you're making the Bible. Listen, as a standard of authority, based upon it is what? authority because it came based before the Quran. What? Your based Quran came six hundred years too late. No, based upon what is it the authority? Six hundred years too late, making new claims. Oh, okay. you have to, Who, okay, you have to prove second, Dave, that Dave, Jesus didn't Dave, die on the cross. Dave, you have I'm to make prove that Jesus you. didn't rise Dave, again. Let me make it easy for you. Who would know what happened to Jesus? God or gossips? I go with the early sources, not a Who book that's six hundred years would later. Who would know more? Who would know more? God or the the people? But that around? begs the question, doesn't it? Whether the Quran is from God or not? No, that no, we can, we can, no, 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 no. You're assuming our premise is, is it is from God. God. No, you're our, assuming it's the word of God. Yeah, no, our premise belief. is it's the word of God. Okay, and so but our you're premise arguing is in a circle. That. You're arguing what? in a circle. I'm arguing in a circle. You're saying the Quran is true because the Quran, because because the Quran says it's true. No, you the have Quran to prove historically, no, no, no. right? That hey, Jesus hey, didn't hey, die. Hey, and hey. Jesus no, who's died. making the, lo the, uh, the logical fallacy of false assumption? When did I assume that? You're you by your very speech. You're, not at all. Is, did I religion. say I believe the Quran? No, no, no. Did I say I believe you're the Quran? You're saying the Bible's not true. Dave, Dave, Dave. When did I say I believe the Quran's the Quran because it said it is? When did I say that? Say that again. Sorry. When did I say I believe the Quran's the word of God because it says it is? When did I say that? I never said that. That's your yes, word, you not mine. You no, said to me, you believe the Quran's the word of God because it said it is. I didn't say that. Yeah, but you believe the Quran's the word no, of God. That's, so your that assumption, mate. that's your false assumption, mate. No, that goes without saying. You're a Muslim. No, so... no, no, no. Why do I believe the Quran's the word of God? One second. Why do I believe the Quran's the word of God? God, yeah, you tell me. No, I won't tell you. You just made an assumption why I believe it is. You tell me why I think it is. You think it's the word of God because you think it's revealed from Allah to Muhammad by right, the angels. So what's that got to do with because it says it is? Why did you say that? You're making a silly argument here. I'm saying to no, you... No, no, no. You made a false assumption about me. Now, let me ask you a very simple question. Why do you believe the Bible's the word of God? Because of its prophecy and the historicity and the archaeological evidence there is associated with it. Mate. We've There's made a mockery mate. of the historicity. I'll watch your streams, but I'll tell Dave, you what. I'm going to leave it at this point. Here, Dave, right? Dave, Dave, I'm going to leave I've it at this point. Here, it'll destroy what you're saying. Yeah, I love it. Dave, I hope you are. You know why? Because all your Christian fellows are scared to come onto the streams to refute what we're saying. So you're a big boy. Alhamdulillah. So what I want you okay. to do, okay. watch those Let streams. Okay. Watch those streams. No, I'm not going to take another question from you, Dave. Hey, Mr. I'm not going to do that. I want to ask a question because he's a nice guy. Never ask nothing. I'm telling you straight what's going to happen. You're going to go, watch the streams, and then come. That's it. So what, what kind of programs this way? You, you doing all the talking and someone else? 
Right. That's all you got to do, Dave. That's all you got to do. Watch what we've already refuted and then come and challenge it. That's what we've been asking Christians to do for a year. That's it. I did say it's the end of the show. Right. So next, not next week, but two weeks from now, we will be back, God willing. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. What, what streams do you have this week, uh, Brother Hamza? Um, oh, mashallah. We've got the Sun of Reject. No, Thursday we've got uh, Perfect Storm here on EF Tower with Sean. Sean, the, uh, you may have seen him in the chat. Really nice guy from Poland, but he's got these crazy concepts of God. So we're going to put his... In Perfect Storm, what we do, we take someone's uh, belief and put it to the test. So we get, we analyze uh, the truthfulness or the um, rationale of what they believe. Alhamdulillah. Then on Friday, we've got the Sunnah Rejection stream uh, with these uh, Quranist Hadith rejectors, um, Inshallah Brown 2, where they should have got all their big boys together to come and uh, bring it. Okay. Uh, Brother Nazam, do you have any videos coming out soon on your channel? Um, currently, um, I'm trying to post a series on the Holy Spirit done by Dr. Ali. He did like a, a study on the Holy Spirit in the Bible and the Quran. So I'm just trying trying to post that on YouTube, inshallah. Mm -hmm. And Brother Sudat, do you have any new videos on your platform? Uh, yeah, they can just uh, check it out at uh, That Canadian Brother on YouTube. Um, what was the could... last video that you did, Brother Sadat? Uh, it was about how uh, parents can filter TV programs and mm, movies. Um, and uh, But uh, of course, I, sh I should have stressed a whole lot more. But there's other duat and, uh, you know, there's scholars who have already done this to stress that there's more productive ways of using our time than watching uh, TV or movies. Even if they're clean movies, there's better things that can be done. But if you find during the COVID lockdown, like your your, your kids or your young children are watching TV anyways, if they're watching programs or films anyways, then at least just know what they're watching. So that's what the video is about. I give some practical tips on some websites you can use to actually uh, filter the films and things like that. If I could just, uh, Brother Hamza, if I could end with a small little um, uplifting story here. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so what happened is uh, the, the very nice American uh, non-Muslim fellow from Rhode Island, New York, he, he sent me an email a few days ago uh, and th this is really encouraging mm -hmm. for us because, you know, we see a lot of the comments and they're all mostly Muslims. But he reminded me that there's lots of people like him who are just lurkers, you know, they're just lurking. They're not necessarily commenting. We don't see them. Maybe they're not giving us a like or a dislike, but they're listening and they're thinking and they're reflecting because uh, he, he was very, very close to Islam. And just now I checked my email. He sent me another email and he said, He's going to be taking his shahada, inshallah, in two days Allahu from now. Akbar. I know, you know, we would all ideally like him to come on and do it right here on the live stream, but I'm not pushing him for anything. Sometimes people want to keep yeah, it yeah, private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, But but he, he just reminded us that, you know, there's other people like him who are lurking there in the comments, but they're listening, they're reflecting, they're thinking about things. And, and just one little side point, you know what his first contact with Islam was? His first... You know, and it was uh, fortunately it was a positive contact through good Muslims. Was that when he was in uh, uh, college, sometimes he he didn't have enough money for food. He sometimes he had to choose. Like one day he would eat, and one day he would use the money for uh, gasoline or petrol or whatever. And uh, somehow someone got a wind of this. You know, he was probably discussing it with a friend in class. Some Muslim student overheard. Um, and he was a, a Ghanaian, you know, he was from Ghana, uh, West Africa, I believe. And one day he just turned up at this guy's door and knocked and said, have you eaten today? And, and I mean, that's, that, you know, that's kind of a strange thing because this guy was taken aback, like, what? And he said, it's a simple question. Have you eaten today? And he said, no. And so he, he said, well, you're going to come and eat with me today. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to divorce my wife. <laughs> subhanallah. <laughs> so, but um, the point is, the point is, subhanallah, this is a reminder to everybody who's watching this as well, too, that some of the most effective du'at, you know, are people, they don't have a YouTube channel. You know, they're not live streaming. They're not doing these debates, but just that human connection, just that reaching out. Just being a good human being and that sincerity, that, that sometimes is what wins people over. So, you know, anyhow, alhamdulillah, it was a good positive story. And I thought I'd just share that with you guys. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. He's saying that after I just roasted Dave. Are you trying to say that, you know, don't, don't be angry all the time. <laughs> to be honest with you, Dave was annoying me because he was making accusations to me that he was committing himself. 
and, it, and it's frustrating. And we've done the historicity for a year, and he'd already agreed to go back and watch the streams. And then come on, I give him a whole show, no problem. Subhanallah. And it was time to I, go. I hope he takes you up on your uh, challenge show. I think he will. Invitation, invitation inshallah. inshallah. No, I think he will. It's, it's very easy. Just go. Historicity streams, Book of Matthew, go for it. And then refuse. Because we've been asking for year, for a year for Christians to come on and do it. And, you know, but I think, to be honest with you, when he watches those streams, I don't, I don't think he's going to come. Because you can't refute none of it. I just want to echo something that uh, Brother Sadat said. We do get emails quite often. And I know EF Dawa specifically has gotten emails where people have wanted to take the Shahada after watching the historicity streams. And I'll, I'll just echo one final statement. Uh, uh, in, in this case, there is a silent majority out there that are watching very closely. They are listening and they do take notes. I've had Christians email me and they've said things like, I've lost complete faith. I don't know what to do. And, you know, we put them in contact with uh, Project Farquhar, which uh, distributes copies of the Quran or with Ayero in uh, America, whatever the case may be, why Islam as well. May Allah reward everyone who watches the streams and supports us because without your support, we would not be able to give the da'wah that we do. Um, Ijaz, do you have any upcoming programs on calling Christians? Yes, thank you for asking, Brother Anis. Uh, this Tuesday, inshallah, I have the Trini Talk Tuesdays, one hour to two hours of dedicated Q&A with the audience, inshallah. MashaAllah. Right. Can I just share with you um, a message I received on Twitter? Yep. Hello, Hamza. Well, I will admit it. I have to speak to you. I just have to. I watched your upload of the conversation with Megan, and now I have to talk to you. She may not have been scared by what you talked about, but I sure was. If you have any time to chat in the next couple of days, please reach out, Alex. Alhamdulillah. So people are, like you say, people are watching and listening, and alhamdulillah. The right. question, why aren't the Christians responding? Well, it's difficult to sometimes, that's what I would say. Well, hopefully Dave is going to go and do his research and write it all down and come point by point. And like I said, we'll dedicate the whole stream to him. Yeah? Sure. Dave defends Christianity. Okay. Uh, Can you put up the EF Dawa email so if Dave is still watching and he will watch this again? Just send an email. Let us know if next Sunday or the following Sunday, whatever the case may be. And we'll set it up in short. I, I think next Sunday but too soon for him, I think. I think he's going to need time to digest stuff and research. Whenever he's ready, inshallah, we'll be... Whenever you're ready, Dave, then at least then you can develop your premises and build your uh, conclusions upon sound uh, ground, inshallah. Inshallah. All right. Yeah, because I tasted Dave in the arena and it did to come, come on again there. in the same vein... Anyway, all right, that's it. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, everyone.